Welcome, it is day two of Dart Sember here at the Moda Super Series and behind today's advent calendar door is another double serving of delicious darts action for you. Uh, Matthew Edgar is alongside me, he's been here all week and if yesterday is anything to go by Matt then it should be very tasty indeed. Oh, very tasty. I don't think anything's been decided yet in either of these groups. We played about nine hours of darts yesterday, and we're none the wiser who goes through to Saturday. Yeah, we'll get Group C underway and concluded in this session. Uh, but last night, Group B started, and it could not be closer, as Henry Deacon describes. Incredibly, every single player from the conclusion of Group B is on four points. Andy Jenkins won his final two games after losing his opening two, including that 4 3 success against David Cameron, who had match starts to win two other games by that scoreline. Josh Payne also on four points, one in the opening day, a 1-4-4 turned the screw against Jenks in that one. Whilst Paul Hogan got out the tracks flying on his first two games, including this one against Josh Payne for ton plus average. As mentioned before, Cameron had opportunities to win three of the four matches he was involved in on Thursday evening. He couldn't quite get over the line in the first two, but managed to get over the line in the second. Yeah, thanks, Henry. Well, let's have a look at the Group B table then before we do move on to Group C, uh, because as we saw there, all of the players winning a couple of matches, um, well, you said it would be tight. I'm not sure even you expected it would be this tight. No, you can see there just in the points column, that is not a mistake. All the players tied on four points it's only legs that are separating them and David Cameron the case in point in how tight that group is he went into the last game in fifth position he won that match and actually skyrocketed to top position I've never seen that happen ever before in any of these groups and I said tight and it doesn't get any tighter than that yeah it's worth tuning in tonight to see the conclusion of that group 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. But today is all about Group C. We'll have a look at how the land lies in the table going into this final session. Remember, the top two will join Kian Van Veen in finals night tomorrow. Currently, Gary Stone and Graham Usher. Do you see that changing? Well, if the numbers on yesterday are anything to go by, the answer is going to be no. Everything in terms of the power scores the 180s, the best legs, they all go to those two players. The one surprising thing for Graham Usher is the lack of ton plus outs, but he's certainly doing enough now in the front end. He averaged nearly 91 yesterday, he's 90.99. We'll give him the extra bit, we'll round him up, we'll give him a 91. He has improved, he's done well. Adam Lipscomb, someone to keep an eye on, because yesterday he got stronger as the day went on. Same with Danny Lauby, he started off, he lost his first three matches, but then won his last two. And those last two will be his first two today in reverse order. Yeah, similar to Group B that we just saw all of the players very much still in contention to get through, though. Yeah, it's like we almost wasted nine hours yesterday, <laughs> really, didn't we? Because we're none the wiser. Normally, at this point, we've got an idea who gets through. I've got an idea. I think Gary Stone's going to be one of them. Gary Stone's been one of the standout performers, not just in this group, but since Tuesday. So we can say one of the performers of the week. I expect that he's going to get through, and I expect he's going to be a danger on Saturday. Well, he got the most points in Group C yesterday, but was he the standout performer of the day? Well, have a look at the stats to illustrate that. And actually, slightly higher in the average department, Graham Usher. Yeah, the top two, you can see why they are the top two, can't you? I mean, that 180 column, it just separates it. And the timing of those that was really coming in quite strong. Gary Stone mentioned in the interview the other day that he picked up on what we was talking about in commentary, like on day one, when he was really letting himself down with the outer ring. And again, 41.86%, really good. And not only that, he's also the best player this week at taking out ton plus out. So it's not just getting down and having three darts in hand. He's actually taking out the big shots as well. He's winning on all the power stats. Well, the top two will meet in a couple of games' time. Gary Stone will face Graham Usher, and Henry caught up with Graham earlier this morning. Graham, Friday here at the Super Seas. How have you reflected on your week so far? Obviously, just lost out on Monday. Struggled a little bit on the Monday. Um, thought I played OK, but gradually I've got better and better. Played better yesterday. Felt more comfortable yesterday. Did it also help the fact that it's the start of a new group, everyone's on zero points, so you kind of have a, a clean slate to go at? Yeah, I thought after Tuesday, look, at, I'm not going to sort of get through for the, for the evening when I win the group. So it was just put the practice in up here, um, look forward to Thursday. And yeah, got a few, rub of the green a bit more on the Thursday than I think I did through the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So yeah. 
obviously you've played here a lot of times, so you know that if you're going to peak, it's going to be at this time of the week. <coughs> yeah, this is time to do it, you know. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I keep saying, you know, it's, it's a bit of a bonus, a bit of a free run to try and get through. And you know you've always got a Thursday, Friday to sort of drop back on and just go again. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Is there a target set in mind what you think probably be par for the course to get through? <coughs> I think it's nice to get to 12 points. I think 12 could. So, but then it's tight. I mean, look at last night. You know, every sat on four points. It's, it's tough. We might get some drama today just like that. Go ahead and good luck. Thanks very much. So, Usher in action in the second game. But the first game is Adrian Conterman against Danny Lauby. Now, when they met yesterday, Lauby won the match, the last match of the day, which saw him go level on points with Conterman and leaving those four players on four, as you just saw. So whoever wins this one will actually be joint second in the table with Graham Usher. So all still to play for today in Group C. Let's get the darts action started in the company of our commentary team. A very good morning to Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon. Chris, a very good morning to you. Welcome to Friday, everyone, at the Super Series, which means it is decision day, and it is exactly that. We'll talk about the tight looking Group B later on this afternoon, but Group C has got a lot of contending to do as well. Gary Stone is the man at the top of the table, but that Race for second place is still very much on, and these two are contenders right in that mix, right in that battle, as Danny Lauby takes on Iron Counterman in the first battle of Friday. It was the final battle of the Thursday afternoon group. Wasn't a classic, but Danny Lauby got two points, which Matthew Edgar keeps him in contention in this group. Yeah, he feels like and it's that's all you want after the first day. You still want to come back Game here on. and be in contention. Now... There was something interesting I spotted with Danny Lauby yesterday. When I went upstairs, I normally go no, up just before not. the end of the game, and I managed to watch the back end of the game, but from a different view, which was on the balcony looking down. And Danny Lauby, when we watched that 60. video back at him hitting that match winning top, you can see it even in that video. He comes up, he approaches the Yoki, he steps back, he moves over to the right-hand side, oh, the and eight. then re-comes back to the Yoki. Instantly, I feel that this is a guy Fifth, who seven. hasn't quite found the range. And when you look at the numbers and his level of performance with what we'd normally expect from him, that really does come hey, through. He's, he's, a, he's a guy who is searching for the best outcome at the moment. I don't think he's comfortable on that stage at the 40. moment. And what could that be down to in your mind? Well, it's not down to inexperience, isn't it? Because he's been here before in this venue. He's played in this format. He's played in the World Championships. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right. And it might be the fact that maybe he's not had as much time recently to put in the same sort of level of practice, or maybe he's changed his routines. Maybe he's just got a bit 57. of coldness in the hands. This is a big room, a big venue. It could be... Just a little bit of cold, maybe a hand warmer could help with that. There's a lot of possible outcomes. I could speculate all day. 90. Danny Rockhorn, 160. See, Danny will hope that he can figure out the answer today because he'll be wanting to get through, so he's playing darts tomorrow. 96. Aaron, you require Eight 20. finals like last time he was here. One group A the last time he was he here. On the first day. takes out the Aaron first Consumant. leg of the day on double 10 as... Danny Lau will be quite eager to get to the hockey. Uh, he got through to Saturday night last Second time, was Danny eliminated in the group stage of the competition on the Saturday night. So that is where he's looking to return. And hey, it's he won. The victor on Saturday will be the sixth player into the Series 2 Champions Week. They'll join the likes of Jim McEwen, Alexander Nine, Burks, Justin Nine. Smith, Colin Osborne and Jamie Kelling in the £20,000 top prize occasion. At Nine, the three. turn of the year. If you are new to us here at the Moda Super Series, first of all, a very warm welcome to you. This is Group C, where we're going to see two One players progress through to a six-man finals field as Ian Conteman gets the first maximum of the day. Group B later on tonight, we'll see three players from five make it through. And the players that make it through today will join Jean Van Veen in the finals tomorrow evening, which you can... Tune in with Matthew Edgar and Chris Mason in the commentary box from 10 p.m. tomorrow on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Nine, Super Series YouTube channel. Daniel but Ian Conteman has got off to a quick start here, averaging 98 and a half, leaving 82 after nine. Double 16 for what would have been an 11 data 
66. But he's going to come back with Lauby all the way back on 172. 60. Aaron, you're oh, he said he's going to hope he's got the answers to working out that feeling of the reach. It doesn't feel like he's got the answers as of yet, and Ponterman's got an opportunity no here to Danny double his lead. That was for a break of throw. So Danny had an opportunity at tops in the last leg. There's an opportunity at tops in this Aaron one, and he's unable 16. to find it. You sort of feel that Ponterman will not the let the opportunity leg. pass Darian him by for a second time. Slow start to the day. Phil Again here Arians for Daniel Alvey. He played the opening game of yesterday. He lost that 4-2 to Gary Stone. Average 83.58. It's actually below that 60. at the moment. He's only been fed scrapped. It's tops at the end 94. of combinations. That's all he's been able to have so far. It's all he's been able to muster. Because the scoring power of Contamin... 140. So far, it's completely outweighed what Lauby's provided. 100. Well, what Lauby's provided, that 100 you just saw there, was only his third Tumpler score of the game so far. When you say he's been fed scraps, it's because he's not even took a seat at the table yet. 180. 180. Aaron, you're going to chair, Daniel Lauby. Take a seat. At the top table, answers the max with a max. 96. Daniel You'll get another shot here, but let you say it's scraps, isn't it? It's got to be a tumpler's finish if he's going to take something out. On to 55. 25 to race into a 3 0 lead. Reminder this is best of seven, which is James first of four. Arian so he is now one leg away from the match. One leg away from potentially wrapping things up for Danny Lauber. Well, we heard from Graham Usher at the first. start of the show. He suggested that 12 points might be enough. I've got to disagree with that. I think we're going to need at least 14 in this group. I'll tell you what, this game has been quietly impressive. Continent averaging, as you can see on your screen now, a shade under 95. Lauby has 44. propelled his average up to 86.3. was 88 up until that previous turn. But hey, this has kind D5. of been the story of Iron Contiman this week. We saw him on Wednesday play to this level game after game after 42. game. And then yesterday started the session well and then maybe towards the middle to latter end just kind of dovetailed a little bit. 60. I mean, this is the fifth day of darts now for Pontum, and after today's darts, he would have played 25 matches this week. And 59. To be fair, I think one of the, the fairest things you could say about him is he's shown as a very good baseline level. He's shown as a very good par standard. A par standard that is above the level that we would probably expect from him due to the stats and the numbers he produces on things such as the challenge story here in the past. Double eight to an in star B for back to back 14s. 60. And, and so again, Lalby being given the scraps of a mid range combination finish. Double Game 50. On the fourth leg. One on the channel five. And Lalby gets his first leg of the day on the board. Didn't even flinch, didn't even hesitate the after the misfire into the treble. You say well done to the spotters on that one because that was an unexpected scenario there from Danny Lauby and the pace in which he delivers his darts. You've got no thinking time. It's just bang, bang. Danny Lauby, like you say, just very assured in what he was doing there. He went the bullseye route. I'm not surprised at that. We did mention yesterday that Danny Lauby is probably one of the players that is going to be very good on the bullseye due to the amount of darts they'll play at home that will include cricket. Cricket is a version of darts. Obviously, we've got the 501 version that you see in, which is the more traditional version, but cricket is done on like those power segments, 20 to 15, 100. and on the 25 on ball. It's a really, really good game. A lot of pros use it for a bit of practice, but over America, Canada, 
quite across Fair, certain you know, countries in like Europe as well. It is the more traditional way to play darts. 48. Aaron, you will now be going 36. 25 first on the 1 2 1. No, he likes the fullside, but Contamin's on 1 3 6 for the match. 96. Yeah, danger there. So Lauby returns for 73 to bring it back to 3 2. Game One shot at double 18 leg. is all he Danny needs. Lauby. And after missing darts at double in legs one and two, he's hit each of his last two and brings it back to three two. So it's Danny to throw first. Game on. Kind of been the story of the week, hasn't it? Games going the distance and players coming back from three nil down. And that's also been the story of Danny Lauby's week. Darts deflecting out of the board. Now, he did have a change of equipment midway through the day yesterday after the, the bounce up to his first couple 100. of matches and since then he tended to have kept his darts in the board 137 yeah it's one of those things isn't it like if everybody's having bounce outs maybe it's the board if one player is having one bounce outs it's got to be the player or the equipment in which they are choosing to use but that is the first one, one of the day Quite a few yesterday. I was tempted to put a YouTube video together, but thought it might take a bit too long. 140. 81 for 11 darts. So there's been five maxes 40. in this match. Contemplate with an average 81. of just underneath 98. And he's putting out an early statement to the field. 41. And again, he's Lauby with the scraps of a 144 finish, which won't go. So, Contamin returns to tops to 60. take the opening victory of the Aaron, day. Aaron, you require 40. Game shot and Not just the opening victory for Contamin. When we consider that in relation to the league table, that keeps him in the running and has probably just knocked Danny Lauby out. If it hasn't, Danny Lauby's going to need to win all of his games from here and hope that other results go the way. The one thing we can say for Danny Lauby is it is now out of his hands. Two players that is firmly in their hands is Graham Usher and Gary Stone. They are in positions one and two, and they are coming up in game two, which is coming up in just a couple of minutes' time.
Hello again. Arjen Konterman has made his move, the first to do so this morning here in Group C at the Modus Super Series. What a performance it was, not wasting any time in producing a top quality display. 96.2 of the average there, three of the matches, five 180s in a 4-2 victory against America's Danny Lauby. Good win then for Ian Konterman and it means that he moves on to six points in the table and into second place in the table, although Graham Usher will be hoping to go back above him and join top with Gary Stone. They play next. Adam Lipscomb and Diogo Portela, of course, still to play their opening match of the day. But as I mentioned, it is, uh, well, what was at the start of the day, a clash of the top two. Stone out in front on eight points and it's the fourth meeting between in fact the fifth meeting between this pair the fourth is the one you can see right now gary stone won it four three and that is quite a familiar outcome in this fixture this week because stone has in fact won every single one of those four ties in a last leg decider uh, will that trend continue can the scotsman saw further clear at the top of the group table. Graham Usher looking to push him to pull level with him, in fact, in P1. But Gary may be just a stone's throw away from finals night. Let's get it on with Henry and Matt. Like that. Cheers, Merv. And I wonder what the rest of the field will be thinking about this matchup, Matt, because a victory for Gary Stone would pull him away, as Chris rightly mentioned in the opening piece of this game. However, a victory for Graham Usher grabs him closer, although would the players, perhaps, especially down the bottom end of the table, for a Gary Stone win, so they're only chasing one spot instead of two? Yeah, I think in a way, or, or the way I've certainly looked at it in this sort of reversed. position, would be you'd want on. one player to get cut away either at the bottom or at the top, because that person then becomes like an ally for you. It's like sending out a Terminator hey, do to you do your business for you. And that's what Gary Stone would become if he wins this. And that's kind of the darts that he's been producing, hasn't he? We would have to no, call him a, the Terminator in regards to the standard of the group. If you look at any number, it 60. all goes down the way of Gary Stone. You picked out an interesting one about yesterday saying we had nine ton plus finishes and Gary Stone was responsible for five of those. Four, was he one? You can just go around the stats altogether with Gary Stone yesterday. Average altogether throughout the course of the day, 89.85. His best, 93.13. What that shows is he was kind of consistent around that mark the whole day long. Seven maximums to his name. That was the joint most of anyone in this group. Graham Usher being the other one. And a checkout percentage much higher than anybody else in the field. Six points higher than the next best in the field. Or 41.86%. And that is why... He is the man the rest are trying to chase. Yeah, it's a very good start you 60. mentioned there about the fact of his Ready best compared to his running average for the day. Now, when they're quite close and tight together, that shows good consistency and a lack of 60. range. What you don't want is a range of performance where you have a 95 and a 75 and then your average meets somewhere in the middle. You want your average to be a true average, a, a true reflection Graham, of every 100. dart you've thrown. And that's what we get with Gary Stone. Game Graham Sean Usher Fursley. massively Graham improved Usher. yesterday. We said about him getting this clean start and this fresh start, and he averaged 90.9. I'm going to call it so 91. To throw first. It would be harsh not to round it up that tiniest little bit. We'll call it a 91, which was the best of anybody in terms of the day so that's why we expect this game to be at a high standard as gary stone gets his first of what can only be described as many 180s 100. we expect to see from him today 29 180s on monday tuesday and wednesday seven yesterday so he's becoming a bit of a 180 machine One hundred and eighty. In fact, it was Graham Musher that levelled up with him yesterday on seven one eighties, and he levels up in this game with one apiece. This is a ridiculous standard of darts at five to ten in the morning. Fifty-five. Standard all together this morning is turning out to be quite good. Top to Gary Stone. This is for an eleven dart leg. It'd be the 
tie bet of the week. Oh, he poor. But he's not going to find his third 12 data of the week on that particular occasion. Not that it's going to matter too much because Usher's back on 166. So he is going to return for this double hey, 10 to level us Gary up here 20. at one apiece. Ten. Now there's pressure. Graham, you require 83. Because this is a breaker throw opportunity now for Graham Usher. Correct. 66 left, so it'll move over to the 16s for the ball. 51. At least 32. Gary I said Requires yesterday, how it. often are the players missing the ball and then slipping into an 18 or a 10 and leaving them a handy double? Right, even thinking about it. Six. And Gary Stone was on Graham an 11 Requires dart 32. leg. He's now missed seven darts at double, and Graham Usher can punish and make it 2-0 if he can find this 16. double eight. He doesn't. Gary required So for all the scoring brilliance that both of these players have provided in the first couple of legs, we head down now to a trouble on the doubles. Game but Gary Stone leg. arrests that slide to level up at one apiece. Well, it's players had multiple first. opportunities there to... Make this one of two score lines. Either Graham Usher was breaking the throw and being halfway to victory, or we had level peggings. It wasn't just the odd dart, it was the handfuls, really. A big moment in this game. It is only a race to four, so. One. Very relevant. And in this short course format, it can all change potentially on just one moment. 45. One hundred. Doesn't seem to have affected the players too much. No 41. real distraction when it's coming to this power scoring phase. But Gary Stone is looking at making his move here. Ninety-nine. 9. But Gary, would he have felt this is the game straight away? 95. If I can get the better of Graham, then I've set myself up in a perfect position to then go on and take the honours. I think Gary's just the sort of player that just wants to get this wrapped up as soon as possible. I don't think he's going to think about what he needs to do. I think he's just going to think, come in here, win these first four matches, 61. and that's job Gary done. requires 72. Nope, 48 left. 48 left after the 24. So, tops for 2 1. 52. And that's a ninth Graham dart, a double miss. For Gary Stone. Is he going to come back? Number one of them. The bullseye now. Nine, T2. Gary requires 20. And this is getting infectious for Gary Stone, these missed doubles. Game shot on the third leg. But he manages Gary to Stone. obtain the break of throw. And at the minute, it's kind of going down to the scoring power of Gary Stone, just affording him well, the Gary to throw first. extra Game opportunities on. at the double. Yeah, we mentioned about what Gary Stone is going to be wanting to get out of today. We know what he wants to get out of today. Nine, he wants to get three. through to Saturday night. He wants to get through to the finals. And he can just not overcomplicate things. The easiest way to not overcomplicate 60. things is to win games. Do you know who doesn't care about the league table? Winners. Winners don't 41. need to care about the league table because you know where you are. You're top. I always said the same for anyone going to Q school because... Q school's the same sort of thing. It's a league format. You pick up points. And I used to say to everyone who goes there, and they'll come back to the table or they'll go and they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's got me a point. That's got me two points. And I said, do you know who gets points? Losers. Winners don't get points. Winners get tour cards. And it's the same sort of situation here. The only people that are going to care about the table are people that are losing because they don't know where they are. Gary Stone will know where he is. He's going to be top. 
And he could extend his lead to 100. Gary requires four 47. points if he can get to four legs first. 47 for three one in this particular Games match. on the four flag. Gary Stone. And despite the averages both being 85, it feels like Gary Stone is in full control, like full command first. of this match. Game on. Well, I think it, the stat that really does show that that 100. is actually evidenced would be the checkout percentages. Graham Usher's one from six. Gary Stone, three from 14. That means he has afforded Fair himself not. an extra eight darts at the double. That means he's outscoring him by nearly a leg. One yes, Brandon, it's a nine dart. It's a perfect leg, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a possible leg of darts. But Gary Stone is getting extra at the double after just four legs. 96. This is why Graham Usher just losing the line a little bit. It's just swaying a little bit five and one. And when you do that, one it just forces you to have to hit an extra treble. That's just the patterns 80. of play. The patterns of play, the breakdown of the scores. You hit a five, then you... A 140 would lend you up on a 176. 59. Rather than the 161, so it forces the extra, the treble that is needed. Forty-one. Ninety-five was Graham Usher's best finish he had yesterday. He wasn't Graham able to register a ton plus finish. In fact, he's only been able to register one all week. Was the hundred and the ten? Fifty-seven. He's not able to get the ninety-five on this occasion. Gary Stone, one four four. I've seen a one four seven from Gary Stone when Graham Usher refused 52. a dart at the double Gary five earlier in the week. Splits a double on sixteen and finds Graham a double sixteen, Usher. and is back to three two. But this is the leg for Gary Stone because he has the darts to seal a 4-2 victory and a win. Now it's him go four points clear of his opponent and Iron Conteman at the top Nine, of the table. Eight. Then coming up after this, it will be Adam Lipscomb in action against Diogo Portella. Both of those players are on four. So if Stone gets a victory here, it means three players are guaranteed to be tied on six points following the conclusion of the Forty. sixth round of matches. And there's that line again being lost. First thing you'll learn as a dart player is vertical line, keeping the dart straight. It's the easiest 96. line to learn on a dart board. And that's a... Top player that Graham Musher is, he'll be disappointed at losing that. But what a reaction to the 26. It's normally the other way down the local. You normally get the 180 followed by the 26. As Gary Stone should really have had his third 180 of the match. But it's come out, and that's probably down to those chunky barrels. The Gary, but look what he's left for the match against Graham Usher. But this time... History will not repeat itself. Nine, well, this is a big opportunity here for Graham Usher to change the complexion of this game. This is a break opportunity. Game shown a sick flag. That Graham levels Usher. up the tie. And now Graham Usher will be throwing first for the match. A match that not too long ago Seventh we were saying final felt like it was all first. about Gary Stone. Right now it's all about Graham Usher. What does Graham Usher do here? First six darts of this leg are big, and he's lost the line straight away with the first dart. 45. And that is one of those shots now where he is going to require an extra treble. 134. Gary Stone wrestles the darts away from Usher's grasp following the first rounds of visits in this deciding leg. 81. Not getting too complicated. That's the situation there. He hits a 140. It leaves him... 316.
a 140 leaves him 176. 100. Even a straight 60 in that situation would get him to the 161. So that's why I say it needs an extra treble when you come off of that line. It's just those patterns of play, those breakdowns, those little blocks and streets that dart players play in. 100. So in first to a finish on 167, but Usher can make it more makeable. 65. Gary, 167. So trouble as visit means he's on the fish. So stone for the match, 167. Down for trouble, 19. Which would have left him a dart at the bullseye to get the job done. And so, Graham Usher. 86. Graham, you require 170. Had a big fish at Champions Week last time out. He's looking to do something similar here to win the match. It's not going to go. And so Gary Stone returns 70. for 81. Gary 81. To put himself on to 10 points. To put himself four points clear at the top of the league table. No score. But he busts his score. So Graham, Graham Usher gets a chance 100. at 100. A finish he has already taken out in this game. The two... Tumplers outs this week, the 110 and the 100. This would be the biggest one of the three. Because this one, well, there is the one. 40. And that Gary does shot now from Gary Stone means he has to start again on the 81. It is only a dart at the bull. Target, he's been quite prolific on this 56. week. 56. That's a good effort. Graham, he requires that's 60. The problem with the bust of the throw, he came back for. 81 rather than three at the double. Game Graham Usher gets two at the double and gets Graham two points Usher. on the board. And the two players we expected to be at the top of the table are up there battling it out for that top position and places in Saturday night's final. Unlike Group A, though, there are two places available for this one. So we'll keep an eye on both of those as this goes on. Two more players on four points are coming up next as they look to put themselves in contention for one of those top two places. We've got Adam Lipscomb taking on Diogo Portella. Well then, after four straight 4-3 defeats, Graham Usher finally gets a 4-3 win against Gary Stone. Darting drama in their first match of the morning, and it bunches 
the table up nicely. Stone could have been the runaway leader at this point. Mismatch starts to get himself to 10 points, but Graham Usher pulls level with the league leader with that last leg decider victory. We'll have a look at that Group C table now. It's getting very, very interesting, isn't it? Everybody very much in contention, but it's Stone and Usher setting the pace on eight points apiece. Ian Conterman on six, and the winner of the next game will join him it would, being two points away from the top two. And the next game is Adam Lipscomb against Diogo Portella. Lipscomb, a debutant here at the Super Series, won the match 4-0 when the pair met yesterday. But just for balance, interesting to note that Diogo's best performance was in his very first game of the day, and that's when Adam posted his worst average of the day. However, it was, of course, his first ever match at the Super Series. So... Will it be a repeater for Lipscomb or will Diogo be the redeemer? Let's find out in the company of Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Chris. And it was a good debut day for Adam Lipscomb, Hampshire County player, from Ports of age 30, nicknamed Baby Boy. And been like Richie Parkin last week and Tony Wood the week before on debut in this competition. Didn't quite know what to expect. We know what to expect from the Brazilian, the 34-year-old Diogo Portela, who played in the opening night of this competition at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And will be looking to make a return to the Saturday night field, but both players know that they'll need to put on a bit of a push today if they are to gate-crash the top two, who look as if they're trying to build a bit of a gap. Okay, first leg, it's Adam yeah, to throw first. A little bit of a gap, Game but that on. can soon get chomped up. We've seen that before with David Cameron just this week in Group A. But 77. I like to have a look at the odds as we we do see what the, the bookies are thinking about the games and where the directions that they think this one will go. And I think they've been quite brave here. With 41. This one. Now, I understand yesterday because we was in a flow of a day, and there was a big move on Lipscomb, and he certainly obliged. He got that 4 0 victory against Diogo Portella, but I think 4 to 7 is a little bit tight here on Adam Lipscomb. We know what Diogo has got in the locker. He didn't show it as 16. fully yesterday, but he did show it as, like Chris Murphy said, in his opening game, a 93.62 in beating Graham Musher. That's what that game when he had those 118 finishers. But in this leg, it has all been about the dominance of Adam Lipscomb with the darts, leaving 166 after nine. That is a bogey out shot, of course. 105. But it just shows the sort of prolific start that he's had to this particular match and continues to spray the trebles. 122. Trying to work out 140. what the benefit of that bullseye shot was there for Diogo. Game shot on the first leg. Doesn't Adam really matter Lipscomb. in this one because Adam Lipscomb has wrapped that up in 14 darts. Second leg is Diogo to throw Maybe first. that price wasn't as Game tight as we think when he hits the stage running like that. Hold on. Is this an Edgar prediction that isn't quite correct? I'm not saying that. It's only been one leg. It's first to four. 140. I just think with the pedigree that Diogo's got, and obviously he's here getting no, in preparation for no. a date with Cameron Menzies at the Alexandra Palace. A couple of weeks' time at the World Championships. That... A little bit 39. Iffy. Four to seven, and Diogo. Price at five to four. Seven I just think there's value in that. Of course, you are having a flutter on the Super Series this morning. Remember, it is 18 plus and begambleaware.org. 
140. And after a slow start to this game, Diogo Portela really has woken up into life. It's his third 140 of the match. 135. And has six starts on 182 to level this game back up with the throw. Seventy. Eighty-seven. Diogo, you require one hundred and twelve. I mentioned that this game yesterday was his best one, four from five on the doubles, two hundred and eighteen finishes. Can he start off with one hundred and twelve? Not on this occasion. 56. We'll take and you're the opportunity for Adam to break the throw if he can wrap up this 110. We'll need a treble. Can't find it. So the seesaw of opportunity. 50. Yogo you require itself. 56. Towards the Yogo once again. Should be getting two darts at the double. Which one will he choose? Picks tops. Forty-six. Adam, you require sixty. Well, that seesaw of opportunity. Teeters back the other way. This is a leg where it's just been swaying backwards and forwards. Two tens. Fifty. Diogo, you require ten. I think they both want to get off this seesaw, don't they? I think they've had enough of this ride. The way off it, Diogo, is double five. Games on the second leg. Diogo Portella. And in the end, he finds that double, and so one apiece it is. The look, it's Adam to throw first. Who is this a bigger game for? Is it for the debutant Adam Lipscomb to get the point Four straight five. away? Or is it for the experience of Portella? The cop out answer to that is it's for whoever really has designs on getting through to Saturday. Did Adam come here with the Fifth attitude of five. getting through? I want to get through, or did he come here for, let's see how it goes, let's get a bit of experience, let's see if I can book myself another opportunity here where then I might see if I can go a bit further. We know Diogo would have come here with designs of getting through to Saturday, so for that reason... I'd have to go with that it's more important for Diogo because if he does lose this game, he could be out of the running because we see the top two now have hit eight points. This would keep Diogo down on four with just four games left. 17. That would be two games to reel one of those positions in, assuming that those players in that top position lose two games as well. A lot of work to do. 140. I'm not saying Adam didn't come here with the designs of getting through to Saturday when you hear what he's been producing locally recently. 99. So in these events, he's probably come here full of confidence. I suppose you have to come here full of confidence to be able to walk into a room and environment like this on a TV debut and pop in an 88 running average for the day like he did yesterday. 28. And there's sometimes debutants you can feel and tell a debutant. He didn't feel that way with Adam. It, it felt like he, you've seen him Fair around the seven. block before. The way he, he just went about his business yesterday. When we talk about experience, we are talking here about a very inexperienced player. This mm. is not a tour-travelled player. This is not a player that has travelled around Europe, Fair putting in the seven. miles, going to the Adam, tournaments, doing the events. The last time we really saw him in any sort of significant event was a youth event nine years ago. 58. Diogo, you require 143. Wasn't a happy hunting ground for him. 95. Adam, you require 100. So the ton for 2-1. Trouble 19, double. 62. So Patella now has the break chance Diogo, here if he can 48. take out this 48 for a 2 1 lead. 
The requisite double. Game for the, the break. Diogo and that Bozzo. could be a huge moment in this game. This has had opportunities in all three legs of this match so far. To throw first. He's only Game been on. able to take advantage of one of them. And for Teller, two out of four on the doubles. It's that proficiency that sees him in the lead. 59. 95. A game that is finally in the 95. balance. 95. Game that Diogo has done the hard work, he's got the break of throw. But you feel like he's going to struggle to drive that home. Let's even start finding a bit of the power numbers. Seventy-eight. He's picking off treble. Which, when you've got the throw, for trouble, it's going to keep you competitive. Another wayward dart. 83. That's again where we say those wayward darts just force extra needing of trebles because he's on the 186 now rather than a finish. 28. Adam Lipscomb, for the first time in this environment, gives us a bit of a howler. Steps up to the board on 206. It's two big fives. He's ended up not leaving a finish on 206. That will get punished in this 100. environment. 100. That's opened up the door of opportunity for Patella. Who, after 60. the first leg, which really was a Diogo, you require 86. Quality leg for Lipscomb. He's just been consistent enough, proficient enough, and has been able to take advantage of his opportunities. Double 16 for a 3-1 lead. 54. Adam, you require 118. Just gone of irony. Irony. 118 finish. Diogo Portella took out twice yesterday in the opening game. How ironic would it be if Adam Lipscomb breaks the throw with a 118 finish, play. history has Adam a habit Lipscomb. of repeating itself. And I wonder if that little fist pump from Diogo was a little nod like it's Adam to, to the past, the past of yesterday, game where on. in game one, Diogo took out two of those finishers in his victory over Graham Usher. Isn't it ironic, don't you think? 80. I mean, it's a bit like rain on your wedding day. Who would have thought and figured? One hundred and thirty-five. And of course, you can get involved with your thoughts and observations. It is at MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We will delve through, of course, the now traditional. Tuxton teaser a little bit later on. 85. 45. You enjoyed the one last night, didn't you, Matt? The, uh, the nationalities one. Yeah, I just struggled with that a little bit. I got to about 17, and then the game just kept distracting me because everyone just started hitting big shots. You see, so. Like there, Diogo. I'll just start thinking about the nationalities. 100. He goes in a 137 to leave himself on the 144 Diogo, and gives himself six darts here to try and re break that throw. Forty-six. Good use of the ball there, because it guarantees him a two-dart finish. 
100. If he'd have chased a treble, it could have left him on the three Diogo, dart. So 98. Really intelligent darts there from Diogo. So it might be a dart at a less preference double. He'd have probably just liked a dart at a double Ooh, in general. He clatters and into the 20. 76. He leaves himself on a two darter. And Lipscomb needs a treble to get a dart at a double here. No score. The Ogre requires Incredible. 55. We saw that last night with Josh Payne, something very similar. And is Patella going to take foot advantage? This is to break Lipscomb again. Game and he does break left. Lipscomb. Diogo and this Portella. time, Diogo Portella is fine for the match. After Adam Lipscomb bust the 76, the incredibly. First. Game on. I think that was not like we saw from Josh Payne yesterday where he accidentally hit the treble 20 to go for the 20. I think that was a miscount because you could see the look of confusion on his face at the back of the stage there. I think Fee, potentially Fee a miscount eight. or maybe you just believe we had a bit of master out. <laughs> master out is where you can go out on 60. a treble, not a double. Often played over the seas. We talk about the different rules and things from different countries. That would make the counting a nightmare for some players. Because one thing that dark players do is they learn patterns. They don't learn the numbers. It's patterns of play. And repetition. Nine, two, five. Also, we prefer the tungsten tension at the doubles. It's all tungsten today. Tungsten teaser, tungsten tension. Tungsten time. 78. Sixty. Well, Diogo's been in this position before. He's broke the throw and then he didn't produce. He is producing now. If he holds his throw here, he is still in the running for Saturday night's 60. final. Timing. 180. Incredible timing. What a time to get the first 180 of the match. Sets him up from being completely out of it to being on a reasonable finish. He might not get a shot. Diogo wants the ball for the 170. 132. Left himself on a finish. A single dart finish. But this would be fantastic from Adam Lipscomb. 66. So Diogo for a chance to keep himself in the running and to upset the odds. Diogo, you require 38. Now the question is, does he go straight for the double 19 or will he split this 38? That would seal him a 4-2 victory. Straight for the double. And now he decides to split. Double 16. 22. Just a whisker wide of the target. 40. And so Lipskin returns for tops. Well, double 15. We saw Correct. something quite similar, but he decides to split as well. 24. Here go, you require 16. For the match, he's already missed three darts. Oh, a couple more. Last dart in hand, and another and opportunity has come and gone for Diogo Portella. Games Six the darts there. he's had, and Adam you Lipscomb. sort of felt he got a bit unsettled ever since that 180 from Adam Lipscomb. It just sort of Seven took from him out of his stride. Adam's it took him from first. a moment of being, game I'm on. the man who's about to win this game to, oh, this needs to happen now. Does need 42. to happen now for him because Adam's got the throw, which means Diogo is going to have to find a third break of throw in order to get this one won. Ninety-three. This is a situation we've never seen Adam Lipscomb come through yet. Yesterday was his debut. Seventy. 
He lost 4 3 to Gary Stone. He lost 4 3 to Graham Musher. So he's not been able to see out one of these do or die legs as of yet. And how different his group could have been if he took even one of those victories. Four, what do you want? Top two as things stand. We're going to see Stone up next against Iron Conterman. Which for Conterman really would make things interesting at the top end of the group. If Stone and Usher claim victories in their next matches, we could be seeing our top two really begin to establish themselves as the forces 100. to beat. Ton there for Portella leaves them on two, six, seven after nine. And Lipscomb's failed to really find a significant visit in this decider. This is getting edgy. And it's scrappy. 43. Getting tense. Both players know this is now or never in relation 67. to their hopes of getting through to a finals night. Six. Both have thrown 15 darts. Sixty. Just gets the Yoga feel of desperation at the moment, this one. Couple of trebles needed. There is one. Eight. With Adam back on one to eight, Diogo will be quietly confident of a return to the board. Ninety-seven. And we record 128. He's left it in a potential two dart. Category. Adam can't finish after that first start. So 67. Another opportunity 74. for Diogo Portella Diogo to get this one wrapped 67. up. Portella got out the traps world yesterday. He won each of his opening two matches. He's going to repeat the positive start to his day on Friday by pinning tops. 27. Not on this occasion. So let's get returns 54. for 54. Tops. 34. I make it seven Diogo, match starts that Diogo Portella has missed so far. Adam Lipscomb has missed plenty of his own now. But the big story is Diogo Portella has the darts in his hand. The nice lie. Wasn't able to use it. Clean, open target at the 10. And that is 10. Match darts come and gone for and Diogo Portella, 20. and you feel that might be it all. Is that all she wrote? Double five. Ten. And now Lipscomb's missing opportunities Diogo to win this match. 20. And Portella returns to another chance at double ten to seal victory. Go and Patella gets the, the points. Diogo he kicks Portella. off his day with a win against Adam Lipscomb. Both players had the opportunities to win the match, but it's Portella who takes his chance, gets the better of Lipscomb by four legs to three. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, it's Gary Stone against Iron Conterman.
Welcome back. Well, before the break, Diogo did it in a dramatic decider. What uh, an anxious end to that match. 4-3 to the Brazilian, but not before missing bucket loads of darts for the match. You can see the checkout percentage there, 20%, 4 out of 20, and the vast majority of those were for the match. Adam Lipscomb himself missed five darts to win that one. Still yet to get through a last leg decider, the debutant here at the Super Series, and it means that Diogo Portela is the one that starts to climb the table and keeps himself in touch with the top two. Gary Stone and Graham Usher both on eight points. Conterman and Portela have six apiece. And after all the players have played six apiece, Lipscomb and Lauby both have four. And it is a meeting now towards the top end of the table as Arian Conterman goes up against Gary Stone. The head-to-head -head record in their four meetings this week is two apiece. Gary Stone took out this fabulous 130 finish to stay in the match against Conterman yesterday, but it proved to be nothing more than a state of execution as Conterman got over the line with that double 19 to get his second win over the Scotsman this week. So it's a, a really important encounter at the top of the table. Uh, Arjen Conterman can actually find himself at the summit or leg difference if he wins this match. So let's see if the Dutchman can climb to the top or whether Stone can get off the mark for the day. Henry and Matthew Edgar will talk you through this next Arrows Act. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. And, well, Iron Conterman kicked off the day very well, didn't he? 96 average in that victory. But the question we've asked of him all week is, how can he follow up? How can he respond? And that's going to be the question that we're going to ask of him here against Gary Stone. I think he's going to have to respond. He's going to have to have that level of performance if he's going to beat Gary Stone. Because Gary Stone has been the performer of the week so far. He wasn't the performer of the it day. Like it's Gary to throw first. He really Game did on. lose his proficiency on the outer ring. Three from 17 in his opening game. But I think Gary Stone is going to pop that right here. And I think he's going to keep trying to book his place in a Saturday's final as he kicks off with his first 180 of this match and his first throw of this match. And I think... Gary Stone is the selection in 60. this one. As I got the selection right in the last one, just saying. You questioned it after leg one, Henry. But well, you should know better than to question 80. one of the Edgar's picks. Now, interestingly, yesterday we saw nine maximums. 58. Oh, yesterday we saw 20 maximums we're looking at a different bracket. 20 maximums over the day yesterday. Over the first three matches, we've already seen 10. Add another one at the start of this one. We're already on 11. We're only at the beginning of game four. 141. Well, we know Gary Stone's got the potential to hey, ignite that column quite some distance. So... You know, 29 180s in Group A, seven yesterday, three for the day Nine, so far, five. two in his opening game against 54. Graham Usher, and one in the first visit of this match. Game show on the first leg. Gary Stone. That ability, like we said in this group, to become, and I'm going to do it because I know you like doing this one, the Tungsten so Terminator. Is to throw first. I use the word tungsten first. 59. Yeah, but tungsten don't have to go on the end of everything. Or, or the beginning of everything. 60. Not unless your name's Paul Starr, of course. We've obviously got Henry's tungsten teaser to look forward to today, haven't we? We haven't heard that yet. 82. All come in time. But you wouldn't call it tungsten breakfast, would you? Or tungsten lunch, or tungsten tea? 59. Or your tungsten commentary box partner? 140. You could actually call it the tungsten tea time, te tungsten tea time teaser.
36. Gary Stone has done this so far today. He's given us moments where you go, ah, Gary's playing well. 15 dart leg, 180. Looking pretty good. And then he's gone 60, 59, 36. And he's not threatening that treble. That first dart a long way off. 100. Are we Gary, now potentially starting to see a little sign of fatigue coming to Gary Stone's game. At the end of today, he would have played 25 matches here. And 64. we know that he also went to a local competition on Wednesday and won that tournament, which means he had a double darting session on 58. Wednesday. And winning a tournament, you, I mean, you, you could say he probably played another five matches on top of what he's played here as well. So he's 30 matches by the end of today. 57. It's a long slog, but Gary Stone's been here many times before. He would know how to pace himself for this tournament. 40. Are you recording 40? So Contamin to level up at one apiece. Wants tops. The two well phone darts. No. Three four. well phone darts. But neither of them find Are the intended target. 48. And so Stone returns to 48 for a break of foe and a 2 0 lead. Double eight. Doesn't go. And so Contamin returns to level this game back up. 40. And that's what I mean about the concern about Gary Stone in this game. It's the distance in which the misses are coming. Misses will come. You cannot hit everything. You are not a robot. 30. But it's the distance of some of those darts Gary away from the treble. And 16. certainly that last dart away from the double. Two eights. Game shot on the second leg. Two nil. Gary Stone. And Gary Stone is in full command of this match and we asked the question well, again Gary to what is Iron Contamin going to do in response well it's been an off one for him it has to be said one that's Gary Stone's second max of the match at the beginning of leg three 40 so an off one it is well off the pace it's six starts at the outer ring, missed all of those. He's only registered one score hey, over 100. He fired. Gary Stone will be thinking, I need to check my calendar because it is only December the 2nd. It isn't Six. December the 25th. It's not Christmas Day yet, and he will feel like it is because when you go up on that stage and you're looking for a win, 100. this is what you want from your opponent. You don't want them to go up there and play well. This is what you want to happen. You want just to have that bit of a cushion, to have that bit of ease. One hundred and forty. Because if he puts another two yeah, points on the board now, he's going to start extending from the rest of the pack. Contamin is one of the leading players in Nine, that pack. Six. So this is the game he would have really desired to have got a win and for everything that is happening to happen here. 41. Gary and also, 40. the significant role that Legs Difference Game could play. The third leg. Gary, Gary Stone. Stone's just reeling off the legs, one after another after another. He may not just do his point tally well, like the world of good. He may do the same Game with the on. Legs Difference. Plus four going into this game, as well as being on eight points. Two points ahead of Iron Contman, whose Legs Difference himself could take an absolute tarrelling. He was on plus three. Well, let's play the what if Three, game here eight. now. Let's say Gary Stone gets over the line and wins this. The next game, Danny Lowby takes on Diego Fortella. Danny Lowby currently bottom of the table and four points. If he was to win that game, Nine, which I think is the seven. most likely outcome, all things considered, that will move him to six points, keep Diogo on six points. Contaman will still be on six points. If then Graham Usher beats Adam Lipscomb, he will stay on four points. And we've got two players that have just ran away with this group. 60. 133. So leaves himself on the fish. He's going to be first to a finish, but how handy can Contamin leave this with the darts in his hand? 59. Gary Rock 170. The fish to win it. 
And about preempting any fate, the way Iron Compton's playing, you would have sensed seven. that he's got six on here. Because there's not really been any signs that this one five one's gonna go. Forty three. Doesn't really leave the one five one. Hundred and thirteen. Much handy. If he's still on a three dart finish, the one oh eight. Mary Stone could get this wrapped up with double eighteen. Match dart. Ninety five. So I Kortman needs to find something inspired to keep this game going. 108 is what he needs. Not going to go. So nine, Gary Stone returns Gary for double nine 18. to put him onto double digits in terms of points. He's going to split it for double four. Double two. Game Boy, four out nil victory. A comprehensive victory for Gary Stone. And it puts him onto 10 points. He's the first player into double figures in Group C. And he is edging ever closer for qualification to tomorrow night's finals. A 4-0 win against Iron Consman, who had an off game there. But it's Gary Stone who picks up the points. 4-0 against Iron Consman. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see Danny Lauby in action. He takes on Diogo Portella. the Super Series. One hundred and eighty. you want to be here doesn't it and guess what you can be here tickets are available absolutely free as well via dartshop.tv we're based at the modus live lounge in portsmouth you can get down even tomorrow night or any of the finals nights on saturdays from 10 p.m head there and secure your free tickets right then before the break we saw gary stone put in a, a decent display 
uh, to win 4 0 against Dalian Konterman, who it has to be said wasn't really at it in that one. Uh, he had six starts at doubles in the game, but an average sub 70 for the Dutchman there, allowing Gary Stone to cruise to victory and keep himself as the man to beat in Group C, as he was at the start of the day. Uh, we can take a look at that group table now, and you'll see Gary Stone is the first to make it to 10 points. Graham Usher on eight behind him. Conterman and Portella on six. Portella has a game in hand, which is about to play against Danny Lauby, who's on four points, along with Adam Lipscomb. Now, Lauby won the meeting when the pair met yesterday, taking out 120 in the process. Nice Shanghai shot there. And he went on to win the match by four legs to two. A uh, big game, really. Maybe more so for Lauby, who's needing to get off the mark today. It is North America against South America. But which one of the pair will be heading north in the table? And whose hopes could be going south at the end of this one? Well, navigating you through it is Henry and Matthew. Chris Murphy mentioning there that he feels this is a bigger game for Daniel Lauby. I personally think this is a bigger game for Diego Portella in relation because I don't think Daniel Lauby is really in a position now. Mathematically, yes, he can still probably get himself through to Saturday night's final. But for that to happen, he's going to need a massive amount of results to go his way. Diogo Portella could still put this in his own hands. If he was to win this, he'll move on to eight points and have the opportunity later on today when he takes on players such as Graham Usher to maybe flip and reverse those positions and put himself through to Saturday night's final. If this is a win for Danny Lauby, he will join in hey, the party it's on six Danny points. Danny to throw first. Game on! But that then just offers the opportunity for Graham Usher and Gary Stone to really pull away at the top of the table. And I can guarantee 55. you now in the practice room, Graham Usher and Gary Stone are sat with their Dan Lauby fan club cards out on the table. And for the rest of the field that are in contention, Four, do you want they will all know that Usher and Stone played each other early on. So it's not as if there's an opportunity for one of them to drop points. They're now playing the rest of the field to accumulate a position at the top so significant that no one else can kind of bridge the gap. Forty-eight. So Danny Lau be in that opening game against Iron Contman averaged 87.19. Two out of four on the doubles. Two maximums in the process. It was an improvement on some of the performances yesterday, but we still feel as if he's got another 100. level to find, you feel. He's got levels. 59. He's got gears. He's just not gone through them as such. He's just sort of ticked to one at this one pace, which isn't something we used to when we watch Danny Lauby. You may recognise him from a couple of outstanding World Championship appearances. The one that really stands out is that one with Ryan Searle. 40. Incredible performance there where if you remember he had the dart, the double seven. It was during the time of COVID and he missed the dart, but the the cheer. Someone pressed the wrong button. They thought he was in the double. They pressed the button. It Four, got the cheer, five. the roar. And he required 150. And, he and Ryan Searle ended up winning the match. 90. He also returned there a year later. Had a game with William O'Connor. Game that very similar sort of thing. Very good standard. Seems to really come alive on that Alexandra Palisades somewhere we will see Diogo And he requires 60. Just a couple of weeks' time. It's good match prep for the Brazilian. Game shot the That's first a nice leg. little double. That's Danny just squeezed Lauby. into the bottom corner there for Danny Lauby. And he leads Diogo Portela by a leg to nil. Second leg is Diogo to throw first. Something we've not spoke about. When we take a look at the back of Danny Lauby's shirt... I'm a really big fan of that logo that he has come 100. up with. Branding and marketing them. You get a good shot of it there. That logo of Danny Lauby. I'm a big fan of the branding and the marketing of the 40. players. And 
just to break that logo down a little bit from what we know about it, obviously we've got the initials, the D and the L in there. But as they come together and merge, it's also giving us the Roman numerals for the symbol of two. The reason it's for this is because Dan Lauby is actually Dan Lauby Jr., or as some sites will refer to him as, as Dan Lauby 2. One and that's because his father was a dark player himself who had some relative success for appearances in the World Championship and appearance also in the 1999 World Match Play. So what you're saying, he's Danny Lowby 2, One Tungsten Boogaloo. And there's the word Tungsten again. But yeah, big fan of that logo. I like the Six. colours of it. I like everything that that symbolises. He's not just done a bit of a squiggle or a pattern and thought that looks cool. Ninety-eight. There's a clear nod to his... To his father within that logo. One hundred. Nice little touch. Diogo, you're it's representative 95. of everything about him, which we'll talk about in the next leg. As Portella has 95 after 12, that triple 19 leaves himself on double 19. 79. That miss there on the inside wide gives Lauby a sniff at this one two one. Now, very much a bona fide opportunity if he could bet the balls, but he doesn't. And so Patella requires back for double eight to level this game up at one apiece and to keep this game on throat. Game shot on the exactly second. Exactly what he does. Diogo Portella. Just going back to Danny Lauby's father, Dan Lauby. Someone on Twitter well, might be able to, to help me out with this. Game on. You can get in contact us with us. I've got my Twitter open here at the Edgar 501. We've also got the app hey, MSS Darts. If you'd like to get in contact with us, because you might be able to confirm this for me. But I seem to remember that 2004 PDC World Championship, we lost 3-0 to Eric Claris from Belgium. 55. But I believe that he had some form of problem, and I seem to think it might have been a detached no, retina. I believe that he was playing that game sort of half blind. Obviously, the last time we saw him take part in the World Championship that he did play in the US 140. Open. The US Open in 2008, reaching the last 32, so it clearly was able to play after that 60. injury. The US Open was very similar to like the UK Open was. All the players went over there and it was like a main stage that was televised with surrounding boards. But to reach the last 32, he had to beaten some good players along the way. 100. His son is most certainly following in his footsteps, leaving 164 after 12 in this leg. Patella back on 248, but that's not going to be for long. 140. Danny Rock, 164. What a time to crack in at 140. And he's going to get a go at this 108. And that could be the visit that changes the complexion of this Diogo leg and maybe in turn the match because this 108 is for a break for Patella. Beautiful first dart. Tops a target. 88. Drags just below, and so Lampy returns for 64. Tops the target. Patel has just missed. Game show on the third leg. Danny Makes Lowy. no mistake of the double 10. Diogo Portella had a dart to break in the third. He couldn't take advantage of the tops Ball of the back of a 108 combination. First. Now be taking full advantage to lead this game 2-1. And in terms of the league table, it would put him level on points with Patello if he can get a win here. And depending on the margin of victory, he would replace Patello into fourth place. 57. Fifty-nine. 
big game coming up next between Adam Lipscomb and Graham Usher when you look at the table. Because a win for Lipscomb really would bunch things up. Usher would still be on eight points 140. in the group. But then you'd have Lipscomb, Conterman, Patea, and potentially Blabby wins this one all on six. I think for the two players at the top, Gary Stone and Graham Musher, they'll probably both be hoping Graham Musher wins. Graham Musher obviously hoping Graham Musher wins, but Gary Stone because hey, it will he just attach the group and there'll only be six more points available to play for at that point. 100. You're already sat on 10. You know you're pretty much over the line. I wasn't sure when Graham Musher hey, said at the start of the day that 12 points might be the golden number, but the way it's actually panning out... 57. It, you know, like it might be. Do you require 138? Taylor's got six from here to level this game up at two apiece. And across the treble 18 first, so 120 remaining. 76. Nine. The Ogre requires 62. Well, that's our first nine of the week. To be fair, you did say there will be a nine in Group C. See, I'm as good as you, Edgar. Game show on the four flag. Dio that was perfectly pinned by Patella. And we are level at two apiece. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm just getting this vibe from this game. I to throw first. Where it, it just feels like two players just kind of cancelling each other out, really. 60. It's two players that it feels like they're searching. Searching for their best. So they neither six. really have produced. We had that game, obviously, from Portella yesterday in game one against Graham Usher, where he came out and set the stall up and set the bar. Five. Might say a little bit too high. One thing this is, though, is this is a game of opportunity. There are two points on the line here. Danny Lauby could keep himself mathematically in the mix with a win. Diego Portello, if he wins this, will move to eight points. 60. And then he's strongly in the mix, and he will certainly then be a big Adam Lipscomb fan, hoping that he can turn over Graham Usher because that will then open the door for Portello to Saturday. 58. 50. 60. Big leg. When, when you get a leg like this, that becomes a little bit scrappy, a little bit tense. It becomes doubly as important. Because it's easy to dismiss a leg that gets a little bit scrappy when you are the winner of it. When you're not, it can just linger. It can feel like that opportunity has been and gone. 132. Danny Brook 96. Fifty-six. And what a turning Did point this would be if Patella can take out this what? 112 with Lauby sat on tops, poised for a 3-2 lead. This will be for a break. He has to find a way above that first dart. Tries to go across. Forty-two. And he requires So Lauby wants tops for game show. Three two. Play. He does exactly that. Danny it's a bit Lauby. of leg of victory. Which you put him on to six points. Keep him in contention. Sibley gets Diogo to throw first. Game on. Game 
You get the sense over the next maybe three to four matches, we'll get a better picture as to hey, how this group's going to play out. One person I think who will be enjoying all of this jostling will be Gary Stone. 59. Yeah, exactly what we said earlier, isn't it? You just win your game, stay out the way of it. The only people that care about the league table are people that are being beaten. Ninety-five. Eighty-five. One hundred. A little bit of venom coming into the Ogo throw here. A bit of snap. Ninety-six. You're going to strike. Sixty. One hundred. It goes back to that theme we were talking 64. about. Both players just completely cancelling each other out at each and every single juncture. Patella 164 then. He's the first to get a go at the double. But he couldn't take advantage of his first dip. So Laupi will be back for 161. Well, this is for the match. Not going to go. So Patella 106 to 100. take us to a seventh and deciding leg in this one. Diogo, you require 106. Just steps back to recompose. He knows the significance of this moment. Might well be his final chance. He's looking to take full advantage of it. 86 left. Double 13 to take us the distance. 93. Made a width of a while away. But it now Danny requires presents 61. Danny Lauby with this opportunity on 61. Double four Fifth for leg four. Seven. Doesn't go. And Patella gets a second crack. Diogo, you require 13. Going to have to split this down. He gets a pick, though. He's trying to work out which way he wants to go. Still hasn't done so. There are plenty of options. Five for double four, one for double six. Would probably be the two preferable choices. Does this now make the first start even more significant because he's thought about his options? Well, he's delivered the first one. Nine. The way off of the second. So Danny Lauby. And he require four. To keep his hopes very slim alive. Game shot of the match. But they're Danny still alive. Lauby. And that's all that matters. And Danny Lauby is a 4-2 victor against Diogo Portella. It puts him on to six points. It puts him above Portella in the group. And only two off of Graham Usher in that second and final qualification spot in Group C. And we're going to see him up next against Adam Lipscomb. If Lipscomb wins this, it's going to be four players on six points.
Welcome back, and it's that time of the day where we get Matthew Edgar's assessment of what's been happening so far. And we'll start with that previous match, the one that we have just witnessed, and it was a win for Danny Lauby over Diogo Portella. Um, it probably helps the top two, doesn't it? Yeah, the top two are sort of pulling away with it a little bit at the moment. And I think if you've Danny Lauby at the moment, you're looking for someone to cling on to. The big stat there is those checkout percentages, four from eight, but still only average 77. He's not going to be happy with that. We know he can play a lot better, and both of them can, really. Well, let's see what it does to the league table. Uh, the top two are Gary Stone on 10, Graham Usher on 8. Could make it to 10 in the next game. But it means that Lauby goes level with... Portella and Quantumman on six points and just gives himself an outside chance. It gives them an outside chance, but this group for me has always been about Gary Stone and Graham Usher, and the two are just pulling away at the top end of the table. And if anyone's got a chance, you've got to start seeing Gary Stone and Graham Usher losing. I just don't see that happening. Adam Lipscomb trying to give himself an outside chance as well, and in doing so, maybe everybody else in the group, if you can just peg... Uh, usher back a little bit uh, when the pair met yesterday lipscomb did show some signs of how good he can be look at this it's a perfect seven darts here he's shown some very good signs yesterday after those first couple of games he really grew into that we might see that pattern again today where he grows into the day but certainly we haven't seen anything from him at the moment that suggests he's going to match the standard that we saw yesterday and we did see graham usher there getting the match won regardless of that mini blitz from Lipscomb in that game. Is that what you expect to see again today? Yeah, I think Graham Usher's going to take this. I mean, Adam Lipscomb's been nowhere near the level that we saw of him yesterday. He's gone more to the sort of numbers that we found when we look into the county and the Super League. And it was a big question, wasn't it? Is he going to be able to follow up what he produced yesterday? Because after those first couple of games, he produced some really good darts. He had some venom in the throw, some zip in the throw. We haven't seen that yet today, and it's not translating on the board. So Gray Musher does seem to be on the up for Adam Lipscomb, his opponent. Well, it could be do or die for the debut. And let's see which way it goes with Matthew Edgar joining Henry Deacon in commentary. Chris, thank you very much indeed. And you get the sense that game six here, could perhaps be the most significant match of this group. It could be a case of five players jostling for one position. Or we could see Graham Usher join Gary Stone on 10 points. And it mean that the rest of the field, with three games to go, are relying on a slip up from the gambler and then some bullets on themselves. Hey, first look, it's Graham to throw first. It's fair to say. Game the Iron Consumer, Danny Lauby and Diogo Portello at this present moment in time are Adam Lipscomb fans. But it's Graham Usher who has the darts in this one. Now, he said in the pre-match interview before today started, Matt, 12 points might be enough. Well, if he gets victory in this match, he would be correct. 180! Didn't see it at the start of the day, but I think that's probably me putting that down to my own personal experience because 100. I've been in the situation in these groups before where I haven't gone through with 14 points. So I thought there's no way 12 is going to be enough. But I suppose hey, with a group like want... this where everyone's beating each other, previous just goes completely out the window. 99. Graham, you require 100. Which makes you wonder what is the number for tonight's group where everyone's on four points? 60. Eight might not be enough. Well, they could do the same thing, couldn't they? They could all go four points again, and then the whole group could be decided on legs. Now, that would Graham be something I'd like 40. to see. Game Top shot 13 darts to leave for Graham Usher. Graham Usher. I reckon we just have a five way nine dart shootout. Well, that would get some views, wouldn't it? Second, it's Adam to throw first. Record breaking. History making. 25. I can, I, can hear, I can hear a couple of people in the background thinking they do not want to sort that scenario out tonight. 60. We see this so often, though, don't we? People that don't have a good campaign in Group A, people we expect to have a good hey, campaign, it just doesn't happen. And then they come to the Thursday, Friday, and it all just begins to come into place. Now, Graham Musher didn't win all his games yesterday. He won a good helping of them. He put himself in a good position. 
and he averaged nearly 91 for the day. And I don't mean this in a not, I mean 80. this in more of a way of a positivity that it looked like he was cantering. It, it looked like 91 100. was probably not really where you'd expect it to be when you look at how he performed. And I think that comes down to the fact of our expectations now when Graham Musher is on the stage. We, we have a level of expectation that he didn't meet, but yet he's still I mean, at 170. Another one of them. For the bullseye. Go for the big fish the for Adam match. Lipscomb. Adam Lipscomb. And that is the 10th of Series 2. So like it's Graham to throw first. Quality. Quality darts there from Adam Lipscomb. You just literally heard me on the balcony when we were chatting about Adam and what we think one in terms of his day and his campaign and i said i've just not seen anything from him yet keyword yet Aye, there was plenty too. of games still to go he did this yesterday he started off quite slow he lost four nil in his opening game to Conterman, and then Four's sort of five. grew into the day are we going to see the same sort of pattern some people just don't like that early morning slot it might be a case that he's just not used to playing darts at half nine in the morning trying to prepare for a match at eight o'clock in the morning we know he is not a season traveled dark and you're player. 142. we know he hasn't played these sort of high-end competition since 2013 hey, when he was playing pdc youth darts Although Asher here is putting in a performance when 44. he knows if he can put 61. one more good one in, he may give himself a really good opportunity of getting through. 105.49. Lipscomb's averaging 94, and the only chance he's had is at a 170. 45. It's the only chance he needed because he polished off the 170. That's a clip that he'll be chopping up later and probably sending 56. to all his friends. Grammy requires 16. The WhatsApp groups will be going crazy. Game show on the third leg. Graham but Usher. But the important thing is getting the points, and Graham Usher is halfway to doing just that. He leads Adam Lipscomb by two legs to one. Four leg, it's Adam to throw first. There's a different side to Graham Usher today. 45. This is the Graham Usher who got to the final of the Champions Week. This is the Graham Usher... 100. That took the champion of champions by storm, the Graham Usher, who's done special things here at the Super Series. 79. 41. 60. 100. 125. You also mentioned up on the balcony that when we look at the, the throw 22. of Adam as well today, it just lacked that zip and that aggression in the early game. And we start to see it come in a little bit more into this one. And 85. I wonder how much of that again comes down to the time of day where he just doesn't feel like the muscles are fully elongated Fair at that time eight. of the day that he can put this snap into the throw that he's now got. Sixty-seven. It's interesting. He was uh, speaking yesterday about the fact he actually had a he actually had a lie in yesterday. He works. On hey, site during the week, usually up at about half past 40. five in the morning. But I suppose darts is like many things. You, you adjust to playing at certain 30. times. Graham, you require 99. It's a different skill, you know. If you're working on site, and a lot of that's going to be about... 79. Force you require or 10. lifting. Like motor skills. 
Darts is a no fine score. motor skill. Graeme required 20. Very different trying to apply Game a level of the performance in a competitive Graham environment Usher. at a certain time of day. Graham Usher is finding the answers in that department. He is Good one leg Graham away Game on. from putting himself one foot into Saturday night's final. 43. Sixty. One hundred. I suppose we should have asked Adam, actually, shouldn't we? We, we learned yesterday that he's left darts to go do a little bit of strongman and he's sort of coming eight. back into it. It'd be interesting to know what the, the biggest or the heaviest thing is that he's picked up. One hundred. Fifty-nine. Pick you up, Henry. Probably do out of his pinky. Probably throw me like a rugby ball. One hundred and forty. Well, to be fair, you could probably bench press me. One hundred and eighty. Great, you're one hundred and eighteen. For the match. Tots Russia. Game shot the to match. put himself onto Graham 10 Usher. points to join Gra Gary Stone at the top of the group. And it makes the task for the rest directly below him very arduous indeed. Usher and Stone are in a promising position to progress now, courtesy of that victory against Adam Lipscomb by four legs to one. So Usher moves on to 10 points. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's Gary Stone in action. He takes on Diogo Portella. Hi there, thanks for being with us. And it is all coming up trumps for the gambler, isn't it? As Graham Usher has won his first two ties of Friday's fixtures. Uh, that 4-1 win against Adam Lipscomb, putting him very much on the hill in terms of qualification for finals night on Saturday. 118, check out the high for Usher. But the only leg that Lipscomb won 
was done in style. The big fish reeled in that 170. A great moment for him on his debut week at the Super Series. But let's take a look at the league table. It is all looking very rosy indeed for Stone and Usher, both on 10 points, four clear of the field now after every player has played seven. Lipscomb uh, as good as out really on four points at the bottom of the table. And the next match does feature that league leader. It is Gary Stone facing Diogo Portela. Uh, Stone got himself a, a thumping victory, 4-1, with a dominant display, including that 106 checkout against the Brazilian when the pair met yesterday, going on to seal the match. As you can see here on tops, and a win for Stone, well, that would get him to 12 points, the mark that the boys in the box have been talking about and would all but seal his Saturday spot. But if Portella prevails, then the race would be well and truly on. So it's ready, steady, throw. Thank you very much, Chris. So a win for Gary Stone would put him in an unbelievable position to get into Saturday night's final. Up against him, Diogo Portella, who has got himself into a position where he can still get himself through, but it's been a case of some up and down performances. Would that be fair to say of him this week? Oh, without a doubt. That's his own words as well. He literally said exactly that as I walked past him not too long ago. Um, just Again, casting my eye over to no, like it's Diogo this to morning to see if there's been a, Game a move in the market on this one. Gary Stone was 4-9 to nine at the start of the day. He's gone 4-11 to 11 now. And you've got to say that, that that market move is bang on the money. It's everything we've seen hey, so far. Diogo five. Portella, we say it's been in and out, but it's been more out than in. Yes, he got that win earlier against Lipscomb. That was a 74 average and a 79 average in defeat to Danny Lauby. If he brings that level of performance to this game, Gary Stone will have him off that stage in a heartbeat. Four, do you want? And interestingly, the performances of Stone the last couple of days have changed the 60. way the betting to win the week has panned out because he has come right in now at nine to two to go on and take the spoils. Jean Van Veen is still the favourite at three to one, but Gary Stone has been the big mover in the market. One hundred. And if you fancy Graham Usher, seventeen to two was the odds on the sports book this morning. Yeah, I'm still not sold on sixty Van Veen. I think he's not the favourite for me. I think Gary Stone tends to be the favourite. Graham Usher. Someone we mentioned earlier in the week when he was 40 to 1. We said that price will get gobbled up. Josh Payne's been a little bit in and out all week. 140. David Cameron, the same. The only player who is giving us an element of consistency at the moment is Gary Stone. The only concern is that a player such as a Graham Usher will just be able to 60. raise it for a couple of legs. Because that's what yeah, you need to do. You need to beat someone for 10 minutes. You do not need to beat someone for five days when it comes to Saturday's final. You have to be the best player for 10 minutes. 130. Yeah, for three darts in that situation. Are 140 you finish with Gary Stone. And a chance to get the break. Ball. 56. So Diogo, Diogo will get another ten. chance at double five to hold in this opening leg. The you know, ring has not been too successful for him. He missed 16 darts. Six. In his game with Adam Lipscomb. 12 25. of those I make as match darts. Miss three already in this one so far. Game shot on the first leg. He will not get Gary away with Stone. that against Gary Stone. He stepped straight back down the off. He knows he's obtained the break. Game on. 
And Patella, who has had a double turn initially for the 140, they miss a couple more. Hey, T4. When you consider the way these two have scored today, you sense the opportunities if they keep playing to tight for Patello are going to be few and far between. Fave, D7. You're going to be stone a little bit off the pace in the opening of this one, but don't suspect it'll be too long before we start seeing 100. that treble bed filled up with Owen Binks, our referee, giving us a big 180 call. 180. Fave, D8. Gary Stone hit two 180s in his game against Graham Mushery at two 44. against Contaman. So he's only already on four maximums. We know he's been a massive maximum hitter this week. 84. He's going to be right on cue. One hundred and eighty. Said it was coming very soon. There it is. First one eighty of the match goes the way of Gary Stone. I think what we'd probably be better off doing at some point 138. is getting that. Gary, one hundred and thirty-eight. Gary, one ninety-three. A recorded message. We can just press a button so I don't have to keep saying Gary Stone hits the first one eighty of the match. Fair like one of those three. memo things. Gary, one hundred and sixty-four. Well, Diogo missed a dart for the 140 checkout. We won't get one for the 164. So Gary Stone, an opportunity to confirm that break of throw. 26. In the opening leg and double his lead. Gary required 40. Loves this area of the board. Game shot on the second leg. Now. Gary Stone. A huge fan of tops right now. And this just has the... So like it's Diogo to throw first. The vibe of it, and dare I say, the vibe of something that somewhat of a mismatch at the moment. One hundred. Always felt this game was about Gary Stone, what level he can produce, and whether Diogo could then possibly raise his game to those heights. Because it has been a bit of a struggle at times this week for Diogo. He's a bit of that himself. Stone. Kicks off leg three with a max. 134. Portella starts 140, 134. This is a proper leg. 57. And it is advantage Portella after six. One hundred. Nine T four. Go one hundred and twenty seven. Shovel nineteen. Gives him a dart at the ball's eye. One hundred and two. He wasn't too Gary far away from the one two seven in game. We have seen a one seventy today. I was gonna say Gary Stone Stone is the sort of player that you'd expect 57. to be able to Diogo, you're required Take 25. Out the with the amount of treble 20s that he does hit. 58. Game show the third That's leg. the third leg Diogo in the leisure. Portella. Diogo Portella. Gary Scone or Gary Scone? Where's my head well, gone? It's Gary to throw first. One hundred and forty. I think you've got to say there, Diogo Portella. I just said after he went two 0 down, it he's got the vibe of something that feels somewhat of a mismatch because he was so far away from his game. To then recover and hit a fifteen dart leg. Kudos to Mr. Portella. One hundred. One hundred. 
And apart from that one leg in which he won, Patel's always found himself a score behind in this match. Hey, T3. Which is, in f which is shown by the eight-point gap in the averages between the pair. 59. Love another one of them. 100. So he leads himself on 78 after 12 to open up a 3-1 advantage against Portella. Who just loses that line temporarily. 45. Gary requires 78. Should get a dart at tops. Game Only needs on the, the one play. dart at tops. Gary he could Stone. have had another three after that if he liked. But Gary Stone opens up a 3-1 lead against Diogo Portela, who now has to win like the lot from here. First. Not just Game to win on. this match, but pretty much keep his hopes alive of making his way into tomorrow night's final, where you can Ooh, join us every two. Saturday night. Dartshot.tv, the place to be for your complimentary tickets. Why should there? We also have tickets available for the World Seniors Championships, which takes place at the Circus Tavern at the beginning of February. Should be a great event, that one. 60. But Thornton will be returning to defend the crown he won against Martin Adams last year. 93. Gonna have some serious competition though this year, isn't it? We'll mm. see some additions to the lineup, such as Mark Dudbridge, who has won a Group A in this environment. Chris Mason, who went Nine, all the way Z9. to finals week when he picked up the arrows again just a couple of weeks ago in Series One. Phil Taylor, Nine, never really be discounted. 16-time champion of the world. Sixty. Mark Gary Adams. require 170. Seen him recently produce some big stuff. This is the biggest stuff of them all, the 170 finish. Adam Lipscomb has treaters to this shot already hey, today. But we are greedy. We would like to see another. All Patella can do is crank in big trebles and hope for a mistake. Puts in a 140. And now he's got to hope that this 87 doesn't go. Well, he's missed the 20, which would have given him a dart at the bullseye. And you can see how incensed he was by that slip. And so Patella will come back for the tongue. Yeah, this is what hold a throw, by the way, as well. Tops, tops, or does he like that lie? Like the lie. And so Stone returns 60. to 46 to require 46. put him on a dozen points. Thirty-six. Yoga, Is that a turning 40. point? Patella thought it was in. 20. But it doesn't go. And so Stone will come back for the double five. Gary required a 4 1 win. Twos. Six. And you can sense the significance of this moment. It's getting a bit tense 20. out there. There's a few missed doubles out there. Ten. Gary require four. Sort of feel that was the last opportunity for Diogo Portella. Gary Stone could end his hopes of two Saturday's qualification, but he cannot get over the Diogo line. Gary require ten. And it does become infectious in these sort of situations. 
Cutting out the middle man and going straight Game for the double Jordan one. The fifth leg. Diogo Portela. Fifth leg is finally over. The 27th dart. Fifth leg, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. So Gary Stone has to go back to 501 points and start the process all over again. 140. The sense that he's just one leg away from Saturday here. Doesn't mathematically confirm his place, but it would put him in a position where 60. it would take a whole host of things to happen to stop him from being there. Obviously, the big goal of the One week is to get through to Saturday's final. Place where you guarantee yourself a few more pounds in the pocket. Where you... Got the opportunity to chase down the five thousand pound weekly prize, and of course, book a ticket through to Champions Week, where you'll be playing for twenty thousand pounds. One hundred. Gary Your prize is on the line and. The first part of that journey is winning this leg. Game and Gary Stone, after all those misstarts of the double, Stone. gets it wrapped up the first time of asking here. And he's won that in just 11 darts. That should pretty much confirm Gary Stone's place through. It's not mathematically certain, but he should be pretty much through to Saturday, where Graham Usher will be also hoping to be. And he's got a big game coming up next because he is taking on Aaron Conteman. Uh, welcome back. Sorry, caught uh, slightly unaware there, but uh, it is getting interesting here in Group C. In fact, it's looking very good for Gary Stone, who has just won his previous match against Diogo Portela 4-2. 
And that means that his Saturday spot is all but sealed. And we'll get confirmation of that by having a look at the Group C table. And we can see that Gary Stone is at that magic 12 points mark that Graham Usher, who is in second place, said would be enough to get through. And it looks like he's going to be proved right. He is looking to get there himself as well in the very next match. Adrian Contum and the man out to stop him. He's in P3. Danny Lerby, Diogo Portella all on six as well. And Adam Lipscomb, bottom of the pile on four. So Usher against Contamin is the next game. The pair have played four times already this week. They were both in Group A. This is what happened yesterday. Usher produced a fabulous 95 checkout before going on to get the job done, winning the match. The head-to-head -head between them over the course of the week is actually 2-2, but Graham Usher is having a much stronger end to the week than the way it started, as uh, Matthew Edgar, I have to say, did predict. And it looks like his prediction for the top two in this group is going to come to pass as well, unless Ian can throw a spanner in the works with a win in this one. If Usher does win, that would eliminate Contamin, and it would mean that Diogo Portella would not be able to qualify either. So the gambler looking to pull closer to finals night with victory here. Let's go back to the oracle that is Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon, his sidekick. When we talk about those buttons and we said, like, some of the things we need, we need a tumbleweed from England, Durant's here, we needed other buttons along the way. I think one of the buttons needs to be a Edgar's prediction button has okay, landed. Because it's Arian to throw first. Because Game on. That's something we're having to say quite a, li quite a bit, isn't it, really? I'm getting... Quite a few things correct. We've had the praise from Chris Murphy there, so I'm looking 68. forward to hearing yours, Henry. I suppose you got a few right. 125. I'll just sit here and talk, then I'll let you do the proper stuff. 96. I don't want to do too many spoilers. I've sort of ruined the week for a lot of people because I've said what's going to happen. Let's say I said the other day, and I'll just reconfirm it, I am not a time traveller. I haven't come back from the future. I've not seen all this happen. 100. Just the clues are in the numbers. 66. Five. Chris Mason probably likes working together because Chris Mason is a big fan of the numbers and we'll sit and we'll just crunch numbers for ages. And nine, Z9, Aaron, you're 152. Chris Mason will obviously be back tomorrow, taking the place of Henry. I'll bet you're absolutely thrilled to get rid of me. Yeah, we've finally got someone 65. who can attend, Grand, so we can get rid of Henry for the day. Go in the attendance award. Well, Usher could win the award for the first Game leg by pinning the 151 for Graham break and throw. Usher. And in a game where he can. Second leg, it's Graham to throw first. Game effectively on. eliminate the field. He kicks off with a 15 dart, a 151 finish. 125. Until today, Graham Usher had only had one finish over 100. That was the 110, which he hit on. I believe it was 59. Wednesday. He took out a hundred finish against Gary Stone. 62. And now has added the 151. He is adding things to his game as he goes. 60. With a 118 finish in his last game with Adam Lipscomb. 140. So he's certainly warming to the task, like the 180s. He had seven 180s yesterday, and he's recorded no, three in his first couple of matches. Graham Usher is starting to become the Graham Usher that we recognise. This is for 13 data on the back of the 15 he accrued in the first leg to go 2 nil up and to... 45. Absolutely and you're blitz Iron Contiman in these first couple of legs. Games this is becoming possessional. 
Usher leads 2-0 in the blink of an eye. An average 103.66. The Arians are through first. Done inside the space of 29 darts. One hundred and four. We know he's got the capability to have this sort of explosive level of performance that literally just comes 100. like it is in this, where it just appears to be coming at ease to Graham Usher. And that is, for me, the the only concern I've got 60. when I look at, saying Gary Stone being the favourite for the week. Because 100. a player like Graham Usher for 10 minutes can put this sort of level of performance in that can pretty much compete 61. with any player in any room in in the world. 59. I was going to say any player in any room in any world, but then I realised we only play darts in one world at the moment, which is Earth. We don't know that. There could be some alternative universe light years away that could be throwing tungsten. We, you know, there 60. could be an external life somewhere in another galaxy where they could be playing this competition. Who knows? We don't know. So maybe one day what we might get is a cross-planet tournament. The top 32 from Earth versus the top 32 from wherever you're imagining this sort of data planet course, is. We want. could be playing E.T. One dart at tops for Contamon. Game's on the third leg. It's the first Very dart he's had at double in this match. Such has been the dominance of Graham Usher in this game so far. He takes it Fourth leg, and brings Graham it to back to 2-1. But it is Usher with the throw in leg four. He's wrestled the darts, wrestled the advantage in this game. And kicks off 140 to keep Contamon under the pump. 100. Sixty. Fifty-seven. Ninety-six. This is game number eight of fifteen. By the end of this, we'll 99. know two more players going through to Saturday. We'll get three more tonight from our five players that are taking part in 41. Group B. That starts around about 10 o'clock. And I think it's safe to say when we look forward to that Group B, who those 59. three players are, we are not the wiser. It's literally just a couple of legs that separate the players because all five players are tied on four points. They go for the ball. He does go for the ball. So he had a 1-5-1 in this match. He nearly added the 1-6-4 to his big finishing repertoire. 58. Graham required 25. Oh, no my. Score. He's hit the triple nine and bust the Aaron score. Aaron Quire 128. Ian Consman can't believe it. Graham Usher can't believe it. The exchanger... Little smile in the background, or ninety-two. A consummate underneath that smile, must be thinking, "Thank you for the opportunity." Game he couldn't take it, flag. and Usher isn't going to miss Usher. it a second time, and he goes three-one up. They're in the heat of we battle, but they can find the funny first. side Game of it, on. and this is a big moment in the context of this group. Nine, Graham Usher, three one to the good here against Iron Contamin. Victory here, but move him on to twelve points. Mean that Iron Contamin would not be able to qualify. Patella would be able to qualify. Mean that only Danny Lowby would still have a mathematical Eight, chance three. of making it on to twelve points. Ninety-five. Danny Lowby still got games to come. One hundred. Graham Musher 
and against Gary Stone. The top two. Fifty nine. One hundred and thirty eight. Polish performance this from Graham Musher has restricted Contamin to just one dart at a double in the entire match. And if he can Nine. polish off this top, that will be the end 40. of the match. Go pretty much the end the of match. the hopes. Graham everybody Usher. else here in Group C, Graham Usher and Gary Stone are absolutely running away with this group. Another two points on the board and three more legs for Graham Usher. We have next a game coming up between Adam Lipscomb and Danny Lowby. Welcome back. So it is all looking like it's pretty much signed, sealed and delivered for the top two in this group now as Graham Usher gets that win. A very convincing one as well over Adrian Contaman. 93.3 at the average. He started with a 151 and never looked back from there and hasn't been looking back in this group. Slow start to the week for Usher when he was in Group A alongside Ayan, but he really has turned it on particularly today after kind of rediscovering his form yesterday. And if we look at the league, it means that it is almost certain now that it will be Stone and Usher joining Jan van Veen at finals night on Saturday. Alien Konterman now eliminated. Uh, Danny Lauby, the only player that can actually catch the top two on points. He al already has a massive leg difference deficit to overturn as well. But he does play both of those players, so if he can get heavy wins, who knows if there could be a, a surprise surge from him at the end of the day. And he's in action now. He's going to take on Adam Lipscomb, um, who's made his debut here this week at the Super Series and acquitted himself very well indeed. Uh, did get the better of Danny Lowby when the pair met yesterday. And what did he do in his previous match? One for the highlight reel. Reeled in the big fish 
in defeat to Graham Usher. It was the only leg that he won, but a fabulous 170 finish, a souvenir to take home from the Super Series. And I'm sure we'll see him again. We'll see him again a few times today as well, including in this next match. It is Lipscomb and last chance for Lowby. Over to our commentary team once more of Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Well, it's quite simple, isn't it? Danny Lowby has to win everything from here and then hope for some mistakes elsewhere. If he's going to make it through, we could see it all signed, sealed and delivered in the next ten, 10 minutes or so, Matt. Yeah, and Adam Lipscomb's certainly going to want to have his say with this. He's going to want some more clips for that highlight reel. That 170 finish in the last game, he had some good moments yesterday as well. We saw that highlight earlier of those sort of seven perfect darts that he put together. Tidy average. Hey, first leg it's Adam to Adam to throw first. Danny Lauby yesterday 4-0 with a 95.43. So there's plenty of bits he can take away from this. Could take 100. a few more bits yet, a few more scalps, a few more performances, 60. a few more big shots. But Lauby's going to have to find top gear in this one, you feel. Lipscomb is doing what he did yesterday. Nice, He's warming nice. as the day goes. And you feel that as if his points are turned for performances. 60. Hasn't quite been. They play much better than the position and the table, at least, says. 77. One hundred. Look at Danny Lauby's average yesterday for a day, 82.71. You expect a lot more from Danny Lauby than 82 for a day. 97. Adam, you've got 135. Doesn't need to go for the bull if he gets the treble. 63. No, he would have opted to go that road. He's been a lot, uh, afforded the luxury 72. of time in his opening leg. And so Lipscomb returns to the 72. Double 12. Now along for double six of the Games opening leg. The and there it is for Adam Lipscomb. Adam Lipscomb. And just saw in the background there, Danny just trying to G Second himself up a little bit. First. And he's just trying to get everything circulating, get everything pumping and ready to go. Now, I did manage to pop next door and have a little chat with Danny Lowby in between a couple of the games. And 45. just to get a little bit more information on what I said earlier about his father, Dan Lowby, and remember hey, that game five. before the match with Eric Claris that there was something about his eyes, and Danny was telling me that he's actually had retina surgery Nine, three seven. times. So it's not really affected too much the level of performance that you can put Nine, forward when they five. practice together. It's Dan Lowby Senior that comes out on the upper end of that one. And then one Danny Lowby was telling me that because that just sort of confirms to him that you can't fully aim a dart. And I wonder if that sort of upbringing with those sort of stories around him is why we see the pace we do of Danny Lowby where... He is just literally one of these players that play on feel, a bit like a, a Michael Smith, for example. 109. 38. And I'm going to require 70. So this 70 for 2 0 lead in next to no time at all. Well, that leads him on double 14. Forty-two. Danny Rock one hundred and thirty-eight. Again, we're just seeing him just trying to psych himself up, trying to get something going. Because at the minute it has been all about Adam Litzkin this game. Adding eighty-eight and a half. And game now into a two-nil lead. Leg. And he Adam breaks Litzkin. the for Danny Lowby. And in a couple of legs time. 
Still we may Adams know the two players best. from Group C. They'll be a part of tomorrow night's final. Here's a interesting little nugget of information 60. or something to think about. When the two played each other yesterday, Adam Lipscomb won four nil. That was the first meeting between the two. It's two nil up in this. So in the six legs that these two have played together, Adam has won every single one of them. One hundred. Danny Longby has never won a leg of darts against Adam Lipscomb. One hundred. Ninety-two. Save at the last dart there. Although sixty, I was going to say Lowby has kind of wrestled the darts on lips, uh, lip, Lipscomb's grasp, but that's sixty. Seventy-seven. Could have allowed Lipscomb another opportunity of a couple of trebles, but back comes Lowby. One hundred. It's starting to look like that polished Adam one. Lipscomb that we saw at the back end of yesterday. And that is probably the only place on the board he could have hit that would have left him a non-finish. That oh, two leaves 99. 99 could not be taken out in two darts. So Adam returns Game for a 3-0 lead there. and extends this winning run of legs against Danny Lauby now to seven. And if he wins one well, more, Danny to throw first. Game on. Lauby's chances of progressing will be over. Everybody's chances of progressing will be 57. over. It would mean that Stone and Usher would be the two that go through and join Jean Van Veen into tomorrow night's 60. finals here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth, where it will be live with you from 10 p.m on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, which if you are watching this broadcast from, don't forget to give us a subscribe because 100. on top of the live coverage, we'll be bringing you other content, including the highlights, game of the day, other such features. 140. In your opinion, do you think we've already seen game of the day or do you think game of the day? Is still to come. One hundred and well, I hope it's still to come. One hundred and seventy. Because it means we're going to see some quality hours. In the entertainment industry. One hundred and thirty. Want to have some fun? Seven. We want to see some great stuff. To keep the game alive. Game show on the four flag. Danny Good last Lowry. start. For Danny Lowby because he knew that his chances would have been in severe peril if he missed that because Lipscomb would have returned like it's Adam to the 64 first. to win the game to nil and for the first time at the Super Series Danny Lowby's won a leg against Adam Lipscomb 35 the door is open to double that tally Lipscomb only opening with 35 100 He's not managed to keep a straight dart. 27. In his first five. Right thing to do there, I think. Switch, come away from the target. Just have a, 59. a reset after five wayward darts. Nine, two, five. Fifty-seven. Becoming a bit of a habit this 41. now for Adam Lipscomb straying with that opening dart. Going to need to tighten that up or that scoreline's going to tighten up pretty quick because Danny Lowby, you'd expect, 44. will sense the opportunity. They've evened out haven't they and they've met in the middle in no, terms of the averages it's now 84 and 82 respectively there was probably a gap of around about seven points at one stage between the pair 100 they've met in the middle and as a consequence it's allowed Lowby more opportunities 
He's left on one for one, but how handy is Lipscomb going to leave this? Quite handy is the answer. So this might have to go. Doesn't go. And so Lipscomb can end 60. his hopes of qualifying Adam for Yerrick tomorrow night's 68. finals and set the Group C field alight. 33. Danny that leaves him on 35. The bull. Biggest start of his week. 56. Doesn't go. And so Lipscomb should get 35. to a double here. For the match, double Going 16. The ends match. the hopes of Danny Lalby and sets in stone the field from Group C at least into the finals night tomorrow at the Super Series. Gary Stone and Graham Usher see themselves into tomorrow night's red car with occasion. Adam Litscombe then a 4-1 victor over Danny Lalby. Doing the double over Danny does Adam. We're going to take a short break. We're going to see Ian Conterman in action up against Diogo Portea. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And you could be here at the Modus Super Series on Saturday night. Book your ticket free of charge at dartshop.tv to come to the Modus Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. Could even be here tomorrow or any of the Saturday nights. Uh, come and book a, a pre-Christmas party. And tickets have been booked now by Gary Stone and Graham Usher. Both of them have qualified for finals night. Joining Kian Van Veen, who won Group A earlier this week. That's after... Uh, Lipscomb beat Lauby in the previous match.
just have a quick reflection on the stats from that one. There you can see Lipscomb winning it 4-1, an average of 84, 72 checkout, and 4 out of 9 on the doubles. Decent stuff on debut from him, but he won't be playing at finals night, nor will his beaten opponent, Danny Lauby. And we can get confirmation of that now by taking a look at the Group C table. Two players on 12, everybody else on six, and that means that none of the bottom four can catch the top two. So it's all settled. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm only joking. We've got six more fixtures to fulfill. And of course, we've got this evening's action as well. Ten matches tonight. It won't be the same in Group B, by the way. Every single player tied on four points this evening. So do tune in from 10 p.m. Uh, the first of those final six matches about to get underway. And it is a meeting between Alian Conterman and Diogo Portella. Uh, when the pair met yesterday, this is what happened. Portella winning in a last leg decider, cleaning up the 74 finish to do so. And he'll be looking for a repeat result in the repeat meet today. So now then, the top two have been ushered through and everything is set in stone. But we do have six more games to bring you. Uh, and if they're still there, Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar will guide you through them. Hello again, Chris. Yes, so we know who is through to Saturday night's final into tomorrow's finale. Don and Usher will be there. You can be there as well. Dartshop.tv, the place to be for your tickets. And for these two, it will be about trying to see the week off of as many victories as possible. Iron Conteman up against Diogo Portello in our next matchup. So we know everything is complete in terms of qualification. So it's all about seeing the group off in style. Sarian to throw first. Game As you on. reach the two first points of Group C. And we'll have a tux and teaser in this game. We'll have a bit of Friday fun in the commentary box. One hundred. Eighty three. Forty. Fifty-four. Is it a case again that we've seen with Iron Continent some good stuff and then some indifferent stuff? Will that be how we reflect a Polly's week when it finishes later on this 100. afternoon? One hundred. To be fair, I don't know if there's going to be many people that won't be having that sort of feedback or a review of the performance. It's been in and out but you're going to get that though you know this is 25 matches that he's looking at playing to play 25 matches at your best is near on impossible Four, when you, you look want... at the timeline that you need to play over we have certainly seen enough from Contamon to suggest though that he has progressed 58. in his career and he has progressed in his performance Certainly is overall numbers and data for 60. this week. I mean, you're a way what we've seen in any previous week or any other sort of challenge tour or Q school stats or any other environment 58. we can find. So, like Diogo, you require 160. the other day, it's almost like we've seen a player grow before our eyes this week. 86. Aaron number 192. 92. Number one of them for Game the double double the for Iron Coltsman to take Aaron out the first leg. Nice little show of respect from the pair. Second leg is the there has been a group first. played with a lot of respect. One 
115. And what was it like in this situation, Matt? Because you've played in this tournament a number of times before. When a group in terms of qualification has been completed, what goes through the players' minds now? Because they know they've been eliminated from the competition, but they know they've still got a show to put on. 100. I'm not going to lie. The first thing that happens is you do lose that adrenaline. You lose that really desire to win. But one thing that does stay is that natural competitiveness that you get from a solo sportsman where you 100. want to win every single time you're there. And that little bit of drive just comes in. Ultimately, the hardest hey, part is playing with the disappointment. Playing with the disappointment of being eliminated. Playing with the disappointment of not being able to get through. And that can sometimes just lead to a little bit of inconsistency. 56. I mean, they've got 141. Need to remember the key motivation 45. for a player like Diego Portello to come here and get a bit of match 30. practice. He was still able to do that. Just because he's not able to qualify doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to get that match practice that he came here for. 58. Aaron, you're going 96. He's got this game, and then he's got another game with Graham Usher still to come. He wanted that match practice because a couple of weeks' time... He will be heading to 72. London to the Alexandra Palace for the PDC World Championship where he'll be representing Brazil in a match against Scotland when he takes on Cameron Menzies. 56. Aaron, you require 32. Game shown the second and That double 16 Marian secures Continent. the break of throw for Iron Contour. So 2-0 to him. Bill gets Arian to throw first. Game on. Now, let's just have a little check of the Diogo Portella setup here. 140. Matt, does it look like there's any differences for you? One hundred and forty. It's hard to tell for sure no, I mean I know Diogo is a bit of a tinkerer, he changes his grip he changes his darts changes his stance so it wouldn't surprise me if he's got a different set certainly working 140 working a treat in this particular leg back to back 140s to start 99 you get to see a troublous visit in this leg But it's Patella who has wrestled the darts from Contamin's grasp. 99. Nine. Aaron, you're going to one, two, two after nine. But Contamin's also on a finish. This one, six, seven to make it three nil. Not going to go this time. 139. Yeah, we have 122. That still leaves him on a finish. If he'd hit the single, it wouldn't have. The treble left in the 110, which is treble 20 to ball. And he required 28. Conterman, after 12 darts, has left Game himself the third leg. 14. So it's a 13 Bunchman. dart leg for Conterman, who, when we talk about going in and out well, of levels of performance, certainly when he finds that game in level and he finds that sort of A game, he's producing some very good darts. One hundred and forty. Eighty two. Sixty. One hundred and thirty. That's the one thing here that's missing from the 
Contamon game here today. Uh, just a big max. He did get three in his opening game against 26. Danny Lowby, which was treble the amount he got yesterday. Only managed one 180 yesterday in the whole day. So you sort of feel if you can just 100. put a few more ticks in that column. Could start becoming a threat to these groups in the future. You just sense that 80. he needs to probably adapt the B game because the A game is up there and competitive with anyone and everyone. But it's been sometimes a case of fee still famine for Iron Contamin. He's not the first player we've spoken about on this topic, and he's definitely not going to be the last either. This is what this format does. It gives you the chance to learn those things. Well, he's on the cusp here of a 4-0 victory against Diogo Portella 40. with an average Aaron just McGuire, underneath 48. 95. 48 to do it inside the region of 14. Go and there it is, Iron Contamin. A 4-0 victory Contamin. against Diogo Portella. A 93.94 average in a 4-0 success against the Brazilian. So Contamin, the victor, we're going to take a short break. It's Gary Stone who will be in action on the other side of it. He takes on Adam Lipscomb. Well, it was Dutch domination before the break there as Contamin pummeled Portella with a whitewash win. 4 0 to Arian Contamin, a 93.94 average. Very, very impressive stats indeed, including four out of four on the doubles, restricting his opponent to just one dart at double in the entire match. A very, very convincing win for Contamin. I mean, it can't be described as too little, but unfortunately for him, it is too late, as we can see when we look at the table. Contamin now in third place, but too far behind Usher and Stone to qualify for finals night. So it will be Kian van Veen representing the Netherlands, the lone representative, Ian will have to come and cheer him on on Saturday. It's, Ian, you've got to go to dartshop.tv to get your ticket, mate. It is free, though, uh, so anyone can do that as well. Uh, yeah, next match then, Gary Stone against Adam Lipscomb. Stone, the man who's topped the table 
Uh, did play Lipscomb yesterday, of course. A nice 89 checkout got the game started for the Super Series debutant, but Stone proved too tough as he has in most of his matches in this group. And will that be the case in this one? Will a qualified Stone remain rock solid or can a relaxed Lipscomb turn on the style a little bit and spring a surprise? Let's find out with Matthew and Henry. Thank you, Chris. And me and Matt were just saying off air, we actually quite like the look of this one because Adam Lipscomb, despite his position in the group, has played some good stuff. And this could be one of those games because both players know the scenario, they could just relax and possibly play their best stuff. Yeah, and for Adam Lipscomb, it's a case of what more can he take from this? He's here to take away from this. And he's got a few highlights and a few bits already. Hey, I mean, the back to Gary back to throw first. Daniel Albi is Game really something on. to take away. The 170 finish, the seven perfect darts, the 95 average. There's plenty here that he has shown us to suggest that 100. we could see more of him in the future. Now, I know you've been waiting for it all day, Matt. I've literally, from the second I woke up this morning, my alarm went off. I rolled over, I hit the snooze button three times. And then, after I've snoozed three times, I thought, oh, I wonder what the tungsten teaser is today. So, would you like to know? Waiting 40. with bated breath. Today's tungsten teaser is this. How many different nationalities will be represented One at the World Championships? One hundred. That's your tungsten teaser. MSS darts on Facebook, Twitter. And Instagram will vary it up later on tonight. You won, Gary. You're going 121. Stone leaving one, two, one after 12. Can't be done now. 97. Well, and tonight we're going to go back to what the government is in certain areas. <laughs> Tots for Lipscomb. Three. Does it go? And so Stone Gary returns Laquan for the double 24. 12. The hold throw in Game the opener the does exactly day. that. Gary Stone. And we said this could be a game where both players just relax and maybe play their best starts. 16. So like it's Adam to throw needed first. for the opening leg there for Gary Stone. Fifty nine. I think if I ask that question ever again, though, I think I'll put it be booted out of this commentary box never to return. That's just by me. 83. One Second 180. 180 of the game so far for Adam Lipscomb. We said he would be looking for a few highlights, a few clips to fill up the groups with. 140. Oh, another two 180s there. The highlight reel keeps extending for Adam Lipscomb. 60. 140. 100. Gary, we're going 138. The Della. 98. Adam, you have 102. 6 after the treble 10. 90. Doesn't go, and such is the standard Gary in this game. 40. He has a dart for a 15 dart Gage leg. On the second leg. And he gets Gary punished. Stone. Gary Stone with a 13, leading 2 0, averaging 103.66. That could be so a nice, like easier to tungsten first. teaser for you, and I'll let you explain the answer, because I'm sure you know. Why is the 138 called the Della? 
58. Because in 1983, a 21-year-old from Ipswich played in a World Championship final. He was a utter outsider to win the tournament. He played Eric Bristow. He was in the final set of a World Final. Bristow 100. had the opportunity to go for the bullseye. They did not to do it, went for the 18. And then Keith Diller took out 138 to win the World Championship. One of the most famous moments in the history of this incredible sport. And he did it once, sporting a naughty pair of red trousers. 60. Same naughty pair of red trousers you see him wearing now in the seniors event. I believe Keith Dellov is in the lineup for the upcoming Seniors World Championship. And you Six. can get tickets for that Seniors World Championship by heading over to dartshop.tv. Four seniors televised events in 2023. Nine. On top of the World Masters and the World Match Play. We'll also see the introduction of the Champion of Champions, which is going to be televised live on Channel 5 at the back end of March. 137. And I mean, we've got 152. Tickets available from just £10. 140. Gary require 86. This is polished performance from Gary Stone. Can he extend his lead? 54. And I mean, require 12. Game show on the third leg. Adam Lipscomb. Well, that was for a break, and so this game returns to throw at 2 1 to Gary Stone. But it's Adam to throw first. Game on. One hundred. One hundred and forty. That would have been for Gary Stone's first one eighty of this game. Because actually there's a very rare thing going on, a very rare 90. story in this match. And that is Gary Stone is being out one eighty by his opponent. Adam has hit two. One hundred and forty. Zero. Very unusual stats when Gary Stone is playing. He's been the master of the maximum this week. 80, he may 100. find himself pegged back level potentially in six starts time from 2-0 up. 85. Gary Unless Rick, he can take out this 140. Another one of them. Would have left double 10. 100. Adam, you require. And so Lipscomb returns for 86 to level this game back up. The double 16. 54. Gary, Four. require 40. The third break of a throw in a row. Game shot on the fourth Gary leg. Gary Stone. Gary Stone. A 13 dart leg. This is a quality affair. We said this is when that. Natural so warrior instinct, the will to win kicks in. Certainly kicking in for Gary Stone, averaging 98. 91. Just one leg away from another two points. Obviously, he still win nine. the group. There will be slight advantages for winning the group rather than finish second. It all comes down to the advantage of the throw in which one. game. 180. Gary Stone registers his first 180 of this game. 41. It was more of a when rather than if, really, wasn't it, for that 180 with Gary? Three things in life. Death, taxes and Gary Stone getting a max. Well, he's well on course here for averaging over 100 in this game. We asked a question earlier about 26. that. 26. Explosive level of performance 90. that we was worried about from players such as Gray and Musher is Gary Stone saying, don't forget about me, boys. I can do this too. 
Game shot and the match. Because that is Gary some Stone. performance by Gary Stone, averaging 103.04 in a 4-1 success against Adam Lipscomb. He is going to be a preeminent danger on Saturday night for a place at Champions Week. A 4-1 thumping victory for Gary Stone. Coming up after the break, we're going to see the other player who's progressed through to finals night from Group C, Graham Usher in action. He takes on Danny Lelby. It'll be fast. It'll be furious. And it's next. Wow, that was a gem of a performance, wasn't it, before the break from Gary Stone. The shackles seem to be off now, having already qualified for finals night. The Super Scott produced an excellent average of 103.04. He was four out of six on his doubles, a 90 checkout in there as well, uh, leaving Adam Lipscomb with just one leg in that thumping victory. Uh, Gary Stone pulls further away at the top of the table, Still, of course, Usher and Stone fighting it out for top spot. We haven't really mentioned that. We know they're both through, but they'll both want to finish at the summit of the group. Uh, Graham Usher in action next, trying to respond to that win for Gary Stone. He takes on the USA's Danny Lauber, who produced this wonderful double-double finish. Top stops to get ahead of Usher in their meeting yesterday. But ultimately, it was the gambler who came away with the spoils in that one. Now, as the boys alluded to in commentary before the break, I'm expecting a quick and quality clash in this one. And I'm going to hand back to Henry and Matthew to see if they can keep up. Five minutes, 48 seconds. That is what is on the clock for the record time of a game that has been completed here at the Super Series. Graham Musher played his part in many quick games. Three, in fact, out of the top five. Graham Musher has his name two when it comes to that. And if you want a certain opponent to help hey, you clip like along at Graham some pace, first. Danny Lowby is your man. Two very quick throwers here. We have the stopwatch on. We'll update you if it looks like we're going to get close to that one. 60. Give you an idea. Those... 
Darts was thrown in four seconds. One hundred. Nine, Z seven. One hundred and seventy. Had to move there. He's had problems with darts falling out, and that second one was precariously hogging the wire. One hundred. One hundred. And the pace of each other has meant that they're both sped up, and they're both quick enough as it is. They'll be leaving one, two, four after 30. nine. Danny Rick, 124. If he takes this out, the first leg will be done in less than a minute. Four, Z4. Hey, Z1. Danny Require. The race 80. is on, they just don't know it. Tops. Game That's on one the first leg done. Leg. Danny Lowby. 15 darts from Danny Lowby. 1 minute 17 seconds. Second leg is Danny to throw first. Game on. So by that pace, we are on course. But obviously, it would 59. have to be a heavy win here for Danny Lowby for that to happen. One hundred. Seconds. That's an insane time. Some songs are longer than that. Fifty-eight. Isn't Champagne Supernova longer than that? American Pie is longer than that. The Don McLean song. Bohemian Rhapsody, of course, the most famous. Hey Jude. One hundred and forty. And, of course, who can forget the Prince track, Purple Rain? It's almost as long as Paul hey, Starr's intro to the seniors. Sixty. One hundred and thirty-five. And Asher here in the blink of an eye leaves himself an 83 after 12. He's going to be under Remember pressure on Danny Lauby, who sat back on 105 if this double 16 Game doesn't go. But of course it goes for Graham, Graham Usher, Usher, who breaks back and levels up at one apiece. Third against Graham to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Sixty. They are three well-thrown darts. Just unfortunate there that he's just found the outside of the top wire. One hundred and twenty-five. Graham Usher. What we've said before is starting to turn the screw. Forty-two. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. I'd be surprised if a couple of people would have took Graham Usher to win this group. He opened the day at five to two. Gary Stone was a favourite, eight to eleven. Seventy-eight. But for those that are wanting Usher at five to two, you'll be very happy with what you're seeing at this point. One hundred and thirty-four. Graham, you're recording 58. Tops to 2 1. Game show on the third leg. Graham Danny Usher. Lowby got out the tracks fine, but that's only just sparked Graham Usher into life. 14 data for 2 1, well, averaging 95 and a half. First. It's fast, it's furious, it's good. 58. Sixty. I'm just looking ahead at the markets. One hundred. It appears that everyone is quite happy to write the rest of this group off and give the wins to Graham Usher and Gary Stone. Graham Usher, there's been a market move. 
And he's game against Diogo Portella. Portella all Three, the way out, nine. despite having the advantage of throw, to seven to four. Graham Musher, you'll get a just two to five in that one. That one's coming up in one four game's time. Five. And we end the day with Gary Stone and Dan Lowby, where, again, there's been a little bit of a nibble. A little bit of a market move on Gary Stone to get the victory over Dan Lowby. 140. Danny Rock, 144. One of them would have left double 12. And this just shows a lot more fluent than Danny Lauber. It feels much more like what we're used to seeing from him. Well, on that 128, the clock hit exactly 60. 5 and minutes 48 16. seconds, which is the record time. So just gives you some indication to what that performance was like when we have already gone past the mark of the fastest game. No score. Graham, you require 56. So Lauby absconding chances for two apiece, which allows Usher the opportunity at tops to break the Lauby throw 46. to go in one. But he also misses Danny the opportunities. And so Lauby now, double eight. Games on the fourth. For two apiece. Danny Lowby. Just had to see out the storm a little bit there. So like it's Graham to throw But first. despite those two brilliant legs Game from Usher, on. the score is still only 2-2. Two, two. Danny strikes me as a guy who gets so Three, lost eight. in the game, he doesn't know if it's his throw or his opponent's throw. Because he sort of just stands on the corner of the exclusion zone there. No, and he's just he like... Too waiting for the call of Owen Binks to decide whether it's his throw or not. And you saw him just stood there waiting and then took One a step back hundred. when he realised it wasn't his throw. Ninety-five. I know in some places, and I don't know whether it's the same where Danny's from, but in certain places, what One they do if you lose hundred. the leg, you throw first. So you might Whoa, never get the advantage of throw if you lose a game five six nil and you lose the bullseye. Quirky different rules that come from different countries or places, locations. Sometimes you get a completely different board, such as the Yorkshire board, 55, where you don't even get a treble on the board. It's just doubles and a tiny little ball in the middle where all the wires come together. One hundred and fourteen. And now it's Lauby's turn to. Have a purple patch in this match. One hundred and forty. Double and ten, a three two, and a thirteen dart leg. It'd be Game a break of throw as well, leg. and it gives Danny, Danny Lowby the opportunity to throw for the match. He steps back into the exclusion zone, ready to approach so the hockey. So Danny to throw first. Game on. Now, and this leg will secure in the two points against Graham Usher. He can win the battle, 57. but he won't win the war. Usher is through to Tomorrow Night's final, as is Gary 100. Stone. They join Jean Van Veen there. Here's a bonus tungsten teaser for you. Can, can you remember why or what game? Was the origination behind the exclusion zone? Eighty-three. Is it a match between? Is it Keith Dell and Rod Harrington? It was. At the two, was it two thousand two World Match 45. Play Blackpool? I think it was the Tavern. Or was it the Tavern? There was an infamous game, wasn't there, between the two? Six. Harrington was kicking him in the the back of the legs and in the heels. That's why we now have an exclusion zone in the commentary box, isn't there? That's just when you're here. <laughs> One hundred and four. That's why you. That's why the COVID times were great. You just had those perfect screens. You didn't have to see each other. Sixty. Graham, you require one hundred and eighty. The rumor is they're coming back as well. Just just when you're here. <laughs> Fifty-eight. Danny require so one hundred four to seal the win for Danny Lowby. Going 
Goes to 16 through. She leads him a dart at tops. She doesn't go. It's so Usher Brandy to take us the distance. Swans. Tops, two in hand. Down for double ten. Game shown the six. And we go with the distance. In this game of two and foes of twists and turns and swings and roundabouts to go all the way to leg seven. To and it's going to be Usher who has the darts. Can he usher in victory? 55. Please, so I think the 548 is not going to happen now. We've nearly doubled that time, 60. actually, which, again, just shows how crazy that game, that 548 game was. When you think this match might be twice the amount of time. You could fit that game in. Well, it's going to be two and a bit times. One hundred. Maybe two and a half. One hundred and twenty-five. Eighty-four. So Usher six starts from one eight one then to CLA four free success. One hundred and four. Going about it very nicely, leaving himself forty one after twelve to Go on and claim the victory. 100. Grammy require 41. Double 16. And now up for double 8. 33. Danny require 157. Well, this would be some way to do it. It's not going to happen. And so Usher is going to return for the double 4. 65. To win this. Phonetic Premier game that is swung one way, then the other. No, score. but is there one final Danny twist? The game that keeps on swinging. Fifty-six. He's gonna have to settle Premier in one of the camps. Game it's Graham Usher that match. gets over the line in the end. Graham Daniel Alvey broke the throw to take a 3-2 lead, but Graham Usher bounced back well, winning the next two legs and takes two more points in his pursuit to be the champion of Group C. That is something that is still not yet decided, and that will be decided in our final round of fixtures, which is starting with Adam Lipscomb against Arjun Konterman.
Well, there was no look for Lauby against the Gambler a few moments ago as Graham Usher won in a last leg against the American Ace. 4-3 in the end to Usher, who could still top Group C at the end of the day. Danny Lauby has one fixture left to fulfil, and Usher will be hoping for a favour in it. I will have a look at that Group C table, and you'll see that Usher and Stone, who have long qualified, are neck and neck for that top spot. Uh, Stone with a better leg difference. So Usher will need to win his last game and hope for an upset in the final match of the day. But the next match coming up is a meeting between the third and fourth places in this group as Adrian Conterman goes up against Adam Lipscomb. And when the pair met yesterday, it was a dominant display from the Dutchman. A 4-0 whitewash win. That was the first uh, TV appearance, the first big stage meeting of any kind for Adam Lipscomb and he soon shook off any kind of nerves and has produced some really good stuff this week. I think we'll see him again. Some excellent highlights for him and has certainly acquitted himself very well. But this for this week is the final fling for both the debutant and the Dutchman as Arjen meets Adam. Yeah, last chance to cast our eye over these two and last chance to see Conterman who for me has actually been impressive this week yes he's had his highs and his lows but his highs have been higher than I expected and his lows have been higher than I expected as well like a, we do a predictor and a number cruncher and 83 to 85 was where I expected him to be he's been around the 88 mark so three points over the top of that which like I keep saying, it feels hey, like we're watching Adam someone throw first. Game on. Someone grow this week, and I'm certainly going to be interested in following him over the next couple of months to see how he goes. Same can be said, really, for Nine, Adam Lipscomb. Be interesting to see what he does now. Is this going to be the moment where he realises that maybe he can compete 59. on a higher level? And maybe we see him put in a couple of miles and do a couple of journeys, play a couple of 100. ranking events and see how he gets on. Certainly the WDF system would probably be a good thing for him to get out into Europe and try and get some ranking points and no, see if he can get he himself to Lakeside. You see what it's done for the likes of Scott Walters and Ryan Finesse. Scott Walters got ever so close to qualifying for that aforementioned WDF World Championship. Cool. He lost out to Jared Cole in the end in that. Sixty. But maybe this just lights up another fire for Lipscomb. Forty-three. Maybe it gives him that inner belief that he can compete with this caliber of players and that there's things on the circuits that he could possibly chase. Possibly that could be the case. Eighty five. Adam you've got one hundred and twenty nine. Well he's certainly shown us that he's got a level of performance that is required to be able to compete on these tours it may even be a case that maybe you see him at q school because obviously if you fall short of there you've got the carrot of the challenge tour one hundred and forty somewhere that continent going 44 why is his trade as does danny Game Malby, someone he's beaten day. twice Adam this week already so there's certainly signs that he can compete on that challenge tour. So look at Zarian to throw first. Now that final game, well that last game we saw was quite quick, wasn't it? Even though it went to a last leg decider. Seven. However, it wasn't in the top 10 fastest seven leg matches. I've actually been given the record for the fastest ever. 140. Seven leg match. Would you like to hazard a guess? That's this seven leg match. One hundred and thirty five. Quick player in there. I have no idea. Forty nine. You should know. Was I in it? One hundred and forty. So I'll I'll give you to the start of the next leg to 
Work it out because Consman here has left. One five six after nine. Gonna get six from here. We have Lipscomb back on two three two. Eighty three. Sixty. Our only requires seventy three. Double leg. Game show on the second leg. Beautifully Arian done Consum. by Ian Consumant to level up. Now one apiece against Adam Lipscomb. Averaging 94.1. And now the shackles are off. Look, it's Adam to relaxing into things and finding some good stuff. I'm trying to think. Do you clue suggests I'm in there? And I'm trying to think of players that I've gone 4 3 with, and I just can't think of anyone that. That's happened with. 58. His blind has genuinely gone a blank. 140. Was it me and Graham Usher? No, it's not. It's not a player who's played in this week, but One as Iron Consumer gets the first max of this game, it was a player who has already played in this phase. That's the clue. 100. Connor Heenahan? Incorrect. 49. 98. He really is racking his brains over this. We'll get back to him the next play because Lipscomb's left 108 after 12 with the Darts in his hand. 100. Adam, you're going 108. Has all gone with throw so far. Double top. 68. And so Consman returns 114. for the 114 for a break of throw. 14 for tops. Game show. Tops it is for the break of throw for Iron Consman and 2 1. Nice little 15 dart leg there for Ian Consumman, who takes the lead well, we'll after leg three with that break. Game on. I think I've got it. It'd have to be someone who is fast. I'm going to go with Yellow Classen. 54. Yellow Classen is indeed correct. It was a game between you and Yellow. You won 4 3, actually. So you got the victory in that one. You got the W. That was in March 2022, and you won it in 10 minutes and 42 seconds. It's not bad for seven legs of darts, is it? 140. Do you both have a taxi running? Yeah, they just said that you don't get paid overtime, you see, so I thought we'd just 60. Let's get it done quite quick. Forty-five. Quite nice to win an award for speed. Actually, it's not something I'm often One dubbed with. Hundred. Actually, so what you're saying is yellow sped you up. Thirty-one, Aaron. You're going hundred and seven. Well, that's a happy accident. Well, that's not. 65. Adam, you require 60. Went from a happy accident to a mess. Game show on the fourth leg. Adam Lipscomb. Another breaker throw. Levels it up. Who's going to be leaving Portsmouth? Fifth leg, it's Adam to throw the winning first. feeling. Game on. You sort 66. of 66. That it's the sort of game that would mean more to Adam if he was to leave here with this victory and a couple more points on the table. 99. 100. Because when you know you haven't qualified, the next step for you is to make sure you've done enough. 75. To make sure you get selected again later on down the line, later on down the road. 
Sixty. Oh my. Well, that won't be in the highlights reel. He thought it was a max. And then the Fee, two plonk out in Gary Anderson S style. I've got a feeling that will be in the highlight reel. That is something locally we used to call 184. 50. Whenever you get a bounce out, you just used to have floor on the end. So if you had 40 with a floor, it'd be 40 floor. 98. You'd clearly see that that last dart was going in the treble. It's just gone pretty much in the same hole as the previous dart and knocked them both out. Aaron but it's not actually knocked the momentum out of this leg for him. He's down to 90. Despite having two darts 96. on the floor. 96. Adam, you're going 90. 218 to 3 2. Along for double nine. 72. And so Contman has Aaron the opportunity to get yet another break in this match and to go within one of victory in his final game of this group. Double 42. 16 doesn't go. And so let's go for turns 18. for double nine. So he's the split. Six double six. He likes this side of the board. Twelve. Aaron, you require well, thirty-two. Well, he did like this side of the board. He probably doesn't like it too much in this moment in time. Double six is a lovely double for a right-handed dart the player. Fifth leg. Arian Conterman. Conterman, another breaker throw. It could be Conterman who See, it's Arian leads to throw Portsmouth first. with winning Game vibes. On. Is this the last leg of the week? The last leg of his 25 matchups that he has took part in between Monday and Friday. 45. 25 matchups where he's really acquitted himself quite well. Done himself proud. One hundred and eighty. This could be a good way to sign off his third maximum of this game bookending the day hit three maximums in his opening game with Danny Lauby fifty but from that position of two two one he somehow found a way of not leaving himself on a finish ninety nine time is on his side in this occasion Ninety-seven. He's nearly well. He's one hundred and eighty points ahead, isn't he? Really, which is the maximum visit Nine, that he has he thrown, three. which is the three Aaron darts ahead 74. that he is. Tops of the match for Iron Conterman to finish his week Arian with Conterman. a victory. It will be defeat for Adam Lipscomb, but he's been a good addition to the Super Series. He's shown us some really, really good stuff over the last couple of days, but it's Iron Codsman who ends with a win against Adam Lipscomb by four legs to two. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's Diogo Portella in action as he takes on Graham Asher.
Welcome back. So Quantum claims victory in the Dutchman's last dance of the week here at the Moda Super Series. Adam Lipscomb beaten 4-2 by Arjen in that one. Uh, average of almost 91, 50% on the doubles as well. Very decent stuff, three maximums and 114 checkout. Good way to sign off his campaign. Uh, we'll just take a look at the league table before the last couple of matches of this group. Quantum finishing in third place on 10 points but he does leave us along with adam lipscomb at this point gary stone and graham are still fighting it out for top spot they are playing in the next couple of matches and usher is about to go up against diogo portella a man who actually got the better of him yesterday thanks to not one 118 checkout but a couple of them and both done in different ways as well this one on tops for the brilliant Brazilian. And then he won the match by bagging his brace of 118 finishers, this time going to the bottom of the board and taking it out on double 19. As for Graham Usher, well, he seems to have got better and better as the week has gone on. And this brilliant 1-5-1 checkout was a real highlight in his last match against the departing Dutchman, Arjen Konterman. Now, he needs to win to get... Uh, a chance of finishing top and hope for the right result in the last match of the day uh, when Gary Stone goes up against Danny Lauby. But this one it is Usher, who is actually looking to complete a clean sweep in this group. Uh, he's facing Diogo Portella, who we'll see for the last time this week. And Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar are going to guide you through it. Thank you very much, Chris. A final four-way for Diogo Portela before he makes his way to the Alexandra Palace for the World Darts Championship over the festive period. He takes on Graham Usher. We will see you again tomorrow night at finals night. And you could be a part of the action too by visiting dartshop.tv and obtaining your complimentary tickets for tomorrow night's finals. And while you're there, you can get tickets for every single week at the Super Series up until the end of this particular series. Now, if you do fancy a Saturday night at the darts, why don't you come and visit the live lounge in Portsmouth? Uh, Matthew Edgar alongside me then for the final two games hey, of this afternoon session. We've been having Game a look on. at some of the odds in this one. And maybe the market we've been looking at has been the 180 market. Well, the first thing you've got to look at is the Fifth win denied. and the loss. Who's going to win the game? And there has been I mentioned earlier that there had been a nibble on Graham Usher. One there has hundred. now been a massive chomp on Graham Usher. Before the off, Diogo Portella was 2-1 to one to win this game despite having the advantage of throw. Graham Usher going all the way out to practically 1-3. to three. That has moved all day. Normally when we see one of these market moves... 140. And if that's the case, Graham Usher wins this game against Diogo Portella with a little bit of ease. What do you make of the Graham Usher most 180s at 6 to 4 then? 84. I think that's incredible value when we look back over what we've seen so far today. One There's one of them already for Graham Usher in the opening salvo. And it you know, he didn't hit a 180 against Contamin today. He didn't hit a 180 against Gary Stone. He did get one. one oh, he's done the blind one. 180, Graham, you've got 81. If that's the one that oh, costs denied. that selection, yeah, require one that is naughty with a capital N. Love it. Dirty darts from Diogo. He's bringing the Brazilian flair to the Super Series. Oh, that was absolutely majestic. 32. Makes you think that he should have thrown without looking at the board for the rest of the day. 14 I won't recommend that. 23. Diogo, you require 20. I can tell you, that had quite the reaction in the practice room as well, McDaughtorus. But trebles... For show, no score. the doubles are for Doe, and he couldn't find the double 10 there. And so Usher returns for the double four. One. But he cannot take that opportunity. Yeah, 20. So Patea has a second chance, a second glance, a second look as the pair exchange a smile. 
The game being played in a good spirit. Double five. Ten. Graham, you require eight. Game show on the first leg. Graham. Well, we all got a very excited. We lit the firework. The, the flame was getting closer for the ignition. Second leg, it's Graham to throw first. And it just fizzled out. Game on. And it never really took off. That's one leg. We've got plenty more to go. And hey, it was interesting watching want... Diogo hit that 180 shot. He actually has his own little quirky feature he does with the 180. He gets the first two in. And then Six. when he throws the third dart, he does the dab. And I've seen this up close and personally. came to my house about three weeks or so ago. And in that period of time, he was hitting a dab 180s. 97. Can I unhear things? He might treat you to a dab 180 in this game. 97. Certainly looks like he's up there having a bit of fun. Samba data, which leads us on to the Tunks and Teeter. We've got 46. a few more minutes before we give you the answer. How many nations are being represented at this year's PDC World 30. Championship? Do comment in at MSS Darts. And then we'll have one final one tonight. 60. Which I can imagine is going to keep you on tender hooks between sessions, Matt. I might not even leave. I might just wait here in excitement, just in case I get a sneak 139. peek. 139. So, Usher, 54 for 2-0. 88. Brand new coin, 54. Game show on the second leg. I Graham get the Usher. vibe. That Diego left that so we could have a pop at the three bulls. Phil gets Diogo to throw first. I mean, it's not as if he's done anything in this particular game that would warrant that fault. 85. Nine, he's six. Would love to see the 180 dab. 180. How about just the conventional? Just put the free trebles in the bed and take the darts out the board. Boom. 140. The one of the 180 dab, Diogo. Eighty four. Eighty two. The young people one hundred and fifty two. Ninety six. Fifty nine. Younger, you require fifty six. Tops. Game show on the third leg. Better. Diogo Portella. Oh, Diogo Portella. With six darts at a double earlier on in this game. Full leg, it's Graham to throw first. It's game side. You get this vibe with Diogo, actually, don't you? Where it has to go first dart or he seems to be forever chasing. 123. Sixty. Fifty-eight. Reminder, one more game after this. Danny Lau will be up against Gary Stone. And then tonight, 10 p.m., we have Group B, which 
quite literally could not be tighter because all five players are locked on four points. 10 o'clock with 60. us on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda's Super Series YouTube channel. One hundred and forty. Eighty-five. Thiago, you've got one hundred and seventy. Well, he's had a couple of one eighties. He's had the blind one eighty. Can he treat us now to a one seventy? The ball. One hundred and twenty-three. He wanted that, didn't he? You could tell by that reaction. He wanted that moment. 83. Diogo, you require 47. 47. Game shot on the four flag. Diogo sort of Portella. First dart or chasing. First dart it was again for Diogo. Fifth leg, it's Diogo that to throw first. Levels up the game. game went 2 0 down in this one, and you'd probably have feared the worst for him at that point. But he's showing a bit of fighting spirit here. 140. And anyone who was happy enough 100. to go against that market move and take those 2 to 1 on Diogo, all of a sudden will start to feel like they've got some incredible value 140 i don't think you should have looked 140 Forty three. One hundred. Tan there leads us on a finish on one six one, but Patel is on one seven eight and could leave it handy with the darts here. Fifty eight. Right over one hundred and sixty one. Ninety-nine. Diogo, you require one hundred and twenty. Been finding this tops the last couple of legs. So if you can get a treble twenty, get another dart of tops. He's hit it two from two in his Game last couple of visits, and he flag. mops off a one twenty finish. And at this point, Diogo's probably just thinking, "Why can I have found this just a Sick couple of hours earlier?" First. Game on. As he now moves. From two to one outsider to one to two favourite to win this match. 60. And so now we talk about how would Graham Usher feel despite getting the job done and qualifying for tomorrow night's finals. We talk about what the final game of the day can have as a psyche effect on the players going into 99. tomorrow. Will he take too much into this? I know, I know it's a game that in terms of the table doesn't have any effect, but you always want to finish with a win. Well, he still could finish with a win, still very much on, but if Patella... Till the victory, how would he react? I don't think he'd care, to be honest. And that's just through knowing what Grey Mush hey, is like. I say Grey Mush is always just the darts in my hand. You can tell in the action. It's just relaxed. It's easy. Nine, he won. Doesn't overcomplicate things. Likes to keep it nice and simple. He certainly won't be taking any negatives from today. One hundred and eighty. That's his third of the match. Five in total. Eighty. Diogo, and the over markets the one eighty. Only back one point five. Did the bookies? Well, that's taken an absolute decimation in this match. Ninety-seven. So Usher returns to ninety to take us the distance with Patella left on four tops. Game shot on the Free free it flag. is. Graham Usher. And we will go the distance here. Seventh from final against Diogo to throw first. Game on. One maximum in the entire day. He didn't hit any 
in his opening game against Adam Lipscomb. He hit one against Danny Lowby. And then he didn't hit any against Gary Stone. And he didn't hit any against Contaman. So, going into this game, Diogo Portella had played nine matches and hit two. In this game alone, he has hit three. 80. Sixty-two. Is he going for the fashionable late entry to the party? Problem is, he's turned up to the party a bit too late that everyone's pretty much left the party. And he's walking into a pretty much empty room. Because the party is over in relation to the qualification. Never too late Please, to put on a good show. Eighty nine. Yoga, you've got one hundred and sixty seven. Oh, Graham Ash is going to return for seventy for the match to Four, finish five. off his Graham, you're going seventy group campaign with a victory. Game Top to it to Usher. Top Usher gets. Graham Usher. We're going to see Graham Usher in tomorrow night's final. He rounds off his group campaign with a victory against Diogo Portela in a last leg decider for free in an entertaining affair between the pair. Five maximums in that one, but it is Usher who takes the spoils. We're going to take a short break. It'll be the final game of Group C upon our return as Danny Lowby takes on Gary Stone. Welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by Graham Usher after he's completed a clean sweep today with that victory in his previous match there over Diogo Portela. Graham, congratulations. Uh, just have a look at the stats from that match. It was actually a really good game, wasn't it, to end the campaign? Yeah, it didn't seem that on stage. I thought it was a lot of doubles missed and, and yeah, happy to finish with a 93 average. But Diego's a tough guy to beat. Um, I know there was nothing on the game, but he just never wants to lose anyway. So it was, it was a tough game for, for me to round off, really. But... Yeah, pleased to get through. Uh, what a turnaround it's been for you this week. I'm going to show you a, a couple of things now. First of all, at the Group A table at the end of Wednesday, there you are at the bottom of it. How are you feeling at that point? Oh, it, was, it was hard. But to be fair, Gary Stone says to me, I lost the, the, the five on the Monday and got a couple of wins. And he's like, it's a fresh on, on Thursday. Go again Thursday. It's all... So to be fair, yeah, Gary's 
been great down there for me. Absolutely solid. Good bit of advice, and uh, we'll look at that table now. He might regret that advice, Gary Stone, <laughs> because uh, when we look at the Group C table, we'll see that you're now top of that. Of course, Gary does have a game in hand. If he wins it, he will go top. Uh, but uh, just tell us what's what's inspired this turnaround, other than that um, conversation with Gary Stone. How have you managed to pick your level up? Because it's been a dramatic difference. Yeah, huge. I say I come down Monday and I just I didn't settle. I just never felt like I was in the games or anything. And I think I forgot how to win. It, and it's easy as that, you know. My son phoned me on the Tuesday and says, you forgot how to win, just do what you do and enjoy it. And I've enjoyed it this last two days. I know it's easy to say because you sat top of the group, you've qualified. But I just didn't enjoy Monday, Tuesday. And it wasn't until Wednesday that I really got going, so yeah. Seems to have remembered how to win now. <laughs> um, if you do get through tomorrow night and win the, the finals night, you'll be actually the first player to make it through to both Champions Week since we started here at the, the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. How important would it be for you to get back there, particularly after losing out in the grand final last time? Massive. Desperate to get back. Desperate to put things right. Lost to a great player. You know, don't get me wrong, Conan played well in the final. I struggled, maybe burnt out a little bit, but yeah, it's a great atmosphere and it's a great place to play a final. I just want to come back and have another taste no matter what you know so, so yeah looking forward and so are we uh, Gray Busher through to finals night he'll be back in action tomorrow <laughs> evening as will Gary Stone but he's got one more match to play today and he takes on Danny Lowby thank you Chris we are in a church so he shouldn't really mention six 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 but this is week six Graham Usher finished sixth in group A on six points and is through to the final in the previous week six, Kieran Tian finished sixth in Group A on six points. He qualified through Group C and won week six. And can I add that this would be Graham Musher's sixth day of playing darts in a row hey, because he's he played Danny in Group Danny A Desiree and first. in Group C. Game on! More sixes in the England cricket team today. But one more game in Group 60. C between Gary Stone, who will return tomorrow night for the finals. He takes on Danny Lowby, who will depart us here at the Super Series for in the conclusion of this match. Four, you won. He'll be staying over here for a couple more weeks. He'll be playing at the World Masters in the Netherlands in the middle of December. One and with darts like that, he will be a preeminent threat. Just haven't seen it in the types of patches we're used to seeing hey, Danny Lowby too. play good darts in. Yeah, he's just not sustained those levels for long enough, has he? And you sort of feel like you'd like him to do well in this one, just so he's got something Danny to draw upon from this experience. Sixty. Average yesterday of just 82 for the day. A long way off the levels we'd expect from Danny Lowby. Seventy. You'd normally expect Danny at least require one six points on top of that. Sixty-one. We have seen him mopping up titles. Over on the CDC, about one hundred and twenty-eight. Danny Rickwood is untouchable on that tour. Game show on the first leg. TDC Danny sort of the TDC development territory over in America. Second leg, it's Gary to throw first. And of course, Danny Lowby being American, it leads us on to the answer to the tungsten teaser this afternoon. 122. Incorrect. So, the question was, how many nations will be represented at the upcoming PDC World Darts Championship at the Alexandria Palace? The correct answer, 28. We'll be back from some more tungsten teasers tonight. Me and Matt, as well as some excellent arrows from Group B. 
where all five players are locked on four points. Do join us, Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. 46. That 100. is a group similar to this one where we're coming in with it wide open. It couldn't be any more open. There are five players taking part in that group. And all five players have four points. Eighty one. Gary require eighty four. Game show on the second leg. Excellent Gary finish Stone. for Gary Stone. That's a 14 darter to level up at one apiece. So look, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. Now that final dart touched the All it has to do is is the point in any way, shape, or form just has to touch the ball for it to count as a scoring dart. That's exactly what happened there. So that's why Danny Lalby was given the 140 there by our referee, Owen Binks. 84. 81. Although I, I did have a chat with Danny after yesterday's session and the conversation went on to English things like roundabouts. Hey, Talking about the magic five. roundabout in Swindon. You know, you see those YouTube videos of, uh, you know, Americans reacting to things. It was very much like that. You couldn't believe the, that there's 52 or whatever it is, turn-offs at the Magic Roundabout in Swindon. 45. You know, a similar Gary conversation with him that actually went onto the topic of ice. And he was like, why do you guys in England, like, make getting ice so difficult? Like, because there's no ice machines in the hotel. I'm like, there is. You've just got over here. That's like four or five star sort of level, you know, if you get an ice machine in the hotel. 87. Gary requires 17. This is for a break. Double four. Now down for double two. 13. Danny requires so now beat returns for 60 to lead 2 1. Tops it is. Long for double 10. Game now beats dead. And he Danny leads Lowby. 2 1. Gary Stone, who's averaging 99 well, and a Gary half, nine points more than his opponent. Finds himself behind in this match. 140. Whilst we've got the opportunity, 53. Matt, I'm not going to ask you the question of who goes through Group B because that, that feels like an impossible one at this moment in time. But what are you looking forward to seeing tonight? 41. Honestly, I would like to see the possibility of a repeat of last night where everybody ends with four points One each. So hundred. the whole table, everyone's on eight points and it is literally decided by legs. I would love to see that. 140. You'd have to buy another notebook to go through those scenarios and jot them down. 36. Now, this game, we are getting to the point where we are going to end up with a chasm hey, in the five. averages. Because Danny Lowby, against the throw, is going completely off the boil. And then playing well with the darts. When that happens, you can normally see a gap of 10, 15 hey, points appear one. in the averages. Gary require 95. Double 19. 63. And then decides to split after not getting the hit with the first dart. Danny 
aware 57. that his mats let him Gary down there with switch to the 32. 19 with the second dart would have left the option James a little John bit more Ford open play. for him Gary Stone when we mention about this is a sort of game where you'll get that 10 15 point gap in the averages we are now Danny at to that throw point first game where on. we have a 14 point gap in the averages because Danny is not producing against the throw that being said he doesn't have to produce against the throw as long as he holds his throw two more times he wins the match 100 that's where sometimes averages can just be a little bit misleading if that is the only number you are looking at. 57. Doing the right things at the right time. That phrase enters the mind. 100. Fifty-seven. Ninety-six. He's frustrated because he missed, but I think he's also frustrated because he took a gamble that didn't pay off. Staying on the 19, it's in the single has left him a non-finish. He'll be even more frustrated there after hitting two treble twenties because that would have probably left him a shot at a double, which he's not going to get. Normally, Gary Stone punishes these sort of Game mathematical mistakes. A one Gary four eight Stone. finish from Gary Stone. He took out a one four seven the other day against Graham Usher when Graham Usher made. See if I get Gary to throw. Well, it wasn't first. a counting error. It was a, a non-calculated risk. And now Gary Stone is looking to make a run towards the finishing line. Have a look at that for a start. 180. 60. 60. Well, that would have been some way to finish it off, wouldn't it? But maximum followed by a ton with the darts. 60. To seal victory in his final game before tomorrow night's finals where he's going to be a part of it. And very much a live contender to pick up the 5K 60. pot. And that place at Champions Week. He's going to get 6 on 161. The average is 100.04. 161. Sixty-five. So ninety-six for the match, One and it's going to be under pressure. Yeah, quite ninety-six. Double eighteen. Game to seal the, the win match. for Gary Stone. Gary Stone. It will be a part of Saturday night's finals, and is going to be one of the favourites to go on and pick up the pot. He gets the better of Danny Lauby by four legs to two in the final game of the afternoon session. For Danny, he departs the Super Series for now. I'm sure we'll see him again in the near future. While to Gary Stone, an average of 99.84. And that 148 finish sees him a 4-2 victor over Danny Lauby in the final game of the afternoon session here at the Super Series. Our final order of business then is to get the post-session analysis from Matthew Edgar, who's upstairs now with Chris Murph. Yeah, thanks, Henry. Well, Gary Stone had been through for quite a while, but there was some way to seal first place, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah, the pair of them, both Gary Stone and Graham Musher, are putting really good performances today, and they've sort of just run away with this group. And it was sort of... There was the two standout performances. There's the two most experienced in this field and used to this sort of format, and they've... They've been here all week and rightly so have got themselves into Saturday after the back of some solid performances all the day. Yeah, final confirmation of the Group C table then. Uh, Gary Stone 
and Graham Usher, the two going through, have been through since about the midway part of this session. Irene Conterman on 10 points in third, Adam Lipscomb, Danny Lauby and Diogo Portella all bowing out at that stage. Have to hand it to Matthew Edgar as much as I don't want to. You did call that. Um, who do you see doing the most damage at finals night out of that pair? At the moment, for me, Gary Stone. Gary Stone has been playing with a very good level of consistency, but with explosive numbers on the big scores, the big 180s, the power outs, those tumbler shots. Everything that we look at deciding a game or one of those key timed moments, Gary Stone is doing all of those, and Gary Stone has to be one of the favourites for tomorrow night. Yeah, and tonight there could not be more of a contrast. Group B could not be any closer. We'll take a look at the table. We'll be back at 10, 10 p.m. rather on Sporty Stuff TV and, of course, the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. But all five players on four points. Just to give you an indication of how close it is, David Cameron was bottom before he won his last match last night, and now he's top. Right, you've been an expert at predictions this week. Go on, then. Here's your challenge. Pick your three to go through from those five. Oh, I, I would love that same sort of scenario where everyone gets four points again tonight. That'd be brilliant, and then it all gets decided on legs. But I think that's just the sadistic side of me coming through. Josh Payne, I think, is probably going to get through that group. I'll go with James Richardson and Paul Hogan. I'll go with three. I'll, I'll predict the lot. Right then, as I said, we will return this evening. Let's see if Mr Edgar keeps up that impressive record, it has to be said, but it will be a real close four thing. Uh, so today, the top two ran away, but tonight it's set to be a tight fight between all five players. See you at 10.